Boom. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Sorry. You can only do the gong uh, when you do it. Everybody. <laughs> now you can no, do no, the no, gong. Can. Now you can do the gong. <laughs> my spidey or my racist senses were tingling. Your spidey senses? My spidey senses. <laughs> you, my whitey my senses. <laughs> my whitey senses are tingling. White people? <laughs> There is not a racism going on. There's not a racism oh, going on. Oh, no. Uh, we're late. Okay, I'm late. Uh, I'm really late because I was just on Pierce Pierce Morgan. He is. Pierce. 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 He is. He Pierce. is. Pierce Morgan uh, with Critical Drinker, and uh, that'll be out later tonight. So, sorry. Uh, thanks for your patience. And uh, we are now going to get going because... We, we have no time to spare. There's so much to talk about that I had to ask these guys what there is to talk about today, but there's actually quite a bit. Uh, Gamergate 2.0, still happening. Well, S Still <laughs> flaring up like an STD. The, me the media are desperate for it to happen because they need some relevance, but yeah, it's okay. Yeah, a little, little late on that one, though. A little yeah. late on that one. Hollywood is in a Great Depression. Uh, we have the Disney battle, which... It However you feel about it, it does come off that Disney's a little panicked about this. I know I, I know some people get get a little mad at the hyperbole that Disney's panicked, but Disney's panicked. <laughs> <The hyperbole. laughs> Disney's in panic mode, in full panic mode. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. The Acolyte, which is going to absolutely save Star Wars. <laughs> wow. Maybe, I don't know. Did anybody here see? Uh, you didn't see Ghostbusters as. Did you see Ghostbusters, Mahler? Why? There you go. Hey. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Exactly I'm my reason. Exactly my reason. But we can get to a couple of questions that we didn't get to with with Pierce uh, Morgan today, which is, uh, you know, is is the franchise dying? Is Hollywood out of ideas? I mean, the short answer is yes, uh, but there's a longer answer out there. So we'll get to it. Uh, what's up, Az? I got my uh, Ghost of Matacombe Kina post today. For my t-shirt as well, so put it on. But this is the Kelly Jones Ooh, variant. Hail nice. Kelly Jones, hail Lynn. So uh, I'm going to have fun reading this tonight. Uh, uh, pretty pretty excited about that. I've still got all my slabs to come and all that. Uh, all the other covers and all that. So it's not, But it's nice to get a copy so I can get get stuck in and the t-shirt's pretty fun. it's awesome hopefully mine's at the p.o box uh my one in six 1995 batmobile arrived today as well from jazz inc so uh tell me how you're gonna fit it on the ceiling because that's what i'd have to do if i got one of those i've got no fucking idea i <laughs> dude Five. stuff is gonna when mr porch mr porch shop's coming next week We've got the modular cases, the DF one twenties. This is going to change. I, I I don't think any of these modular cases are going to be here 
uh, in two weeks' time. I think they're all going to be downstairs in the front room. And there, I'm probably going to bring up the one in three Batman statues for there. And uh, maybe a couple of glass cabinets to go there. And there'll be about this much space for Bell. Bell is currently, Bell's got a new place to live. Do you know what it's called? Outside. My bedroom. The farm, is it? My bedroom. Oh, okay. <laughs> she, she is like waking me up uh, of a night saying, My bed. Get out. The, um, uh, no. My bed, Bell. No, I think if it, so, uh, yeah, she's uh, she's just home invading my bedroom right now. Good. Good. You deserve it. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I do. <laughs> What's up, Mahler? No, oh, hello. Uh, I don't know. Nothing. Nothing, nothing really strikes. I mean, you know, no, no, no new events. Nothing. Nothing new. No, not really doing anything. Nope. Just chilled out, keeping track of things I'm supposed to be, you know, watching here and there. Except also keeping track of things I guess I've decided not to watch. It has been funny watching the uh, opinions of Ghostbusters slowly trickle out. It Oof. seems that people can barely muster a. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's just it's kind of um, this kind of reflects my opinion on what I think the fate of like Alien will be as well. Yep. Where these once great franchises, we had like moments of them being horribly destroyed, and maybe the best they can ever do in the future is oh, uh, they have a new one, huh? Uh, and uh, oh, oh, it looks like the uh, kind of there's some stuff which looks like uh, oh, hey, it's before. another girl fighting an alien. So in a tank top, in a tank top that <laughs> is rip offly. Uh, Rip yeah. Rip <laughs> <laughs> Stealing wow. it. Stealing it. Dude, the, the world can have it. It's another rip Uh This is the glow. By the way, this is these the glow in the dark. Dead Man Batman covers Kelly Jones. Nice. Nice. Um, uh, I don't know on. if anyone caught the open bar episode, but like most of the people there were pretty happy with the Romulus trailer. I was just depressed. I wasn't. Uh, like, I saw I it. And, I, I yeah, I saw it and just went. Eh. Uh, oh, it's it I kind think, of looks a bit like Alien, sort of, kind of. Yeah. Uh, well, with, I, th um, I think the reason why people, characters. I think the reason people are happy is because there was nothing in there that made anyone go like, oh. It was more just like, okay, it looks like there's violence and atmosphere oh. and people running around. Are we which, there? You, know, uh, you know, there was no that's, line that's like, you know, I mean. you know what fighting these aliens needs a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and a, like, five foot, a five foot two woman yep. that looks like she's just walked out of a fucking soy chai latte cafe <laughs> right i was trying to explain to uh to everyone it's like i'm not a, i'm not a particularly old man but alien really feels old like man. the franchise for me that it was one of the first in my life that got destroyed because that would have been when i watched alien 3 that i was like oh my god you know what i mean it's like a retro destruction of an ip at this point so the fact that it's been destroyed, what, seven times? And so the idea that it's like, but there's a new one coming out. The trailer looks neat. I had like actual PTSD flashbacks, the fucking Prometheus trailer. Where I was like, do you do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> I, I remember. I remember. And then you find out. <laughs> I thought that was the, um... the Prometheus trailer. That's it. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was the Acolyte trailer just needed a little more pace. Hey, that, that was. <laughs> yeah. I really think the. the... I'll defend, like, the Prometheus trailer is kind of amazing. If you rewatch it today, it's so fucking hype if you ignore that there was a film attached to it. Uh, <laughs> wait, okay. Prometheus came out... 2011? Yeah, okay, so that's the one. I'm forgetting who the writer was. Was it Damon Lindelof? Uh, Unfortunately, uh, yes. Yeah. I, I was at Comic-Con, and Derek Robertson was there, and he brought a friend, and I was shitting on the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it was David Lindelof in the booth. <laughs> oh, it whoever wrote it, no. whoever fucking wrote it, was in the booth, and I was shitting on the movie because uh, <laughs> I'd seen a preview. It was uh, uh, yeah. Oh, Dan O'Bannon as well. Uh, and uh, I like John Dan O'Bannon. Bates. Maybe he is. maybe he put the story in. I don't know. Dan O'Bannon. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the credits were, but obviously Rocky just. A Alien is a sad franchise. It's not the only one, of course. It's just the seeing the Romulus trailer. I, I was thinking, like, uh oh, are we is it going to be like Predator, where it's a movie that isn't the worst thing ever? And so we're just like, well, that's fine. And then I was thinking, like, oh god, that's what Ghostbusters is. It's like, uh, dude, these fine. are these are one 
possibly two movies. That's it. It was a movie. Uh, I'll, I'll be nice. It was a movie and a sequel, obviously, with Alien, Aliens, Terminator, Terminator 2, Predator, yeah. Predator, 2, Predator 2. And they were of their time. They, they, they were just absolutely of their time. It's the same with Ghostbusters. And it, it can, and it's been proven time and time again. Did we forget Dark Fate? Terminator <laughs> Dark Fate, which is the worst of them all, dude. Absolutely they'll, worst subversion. They'll come to Terminator again, right? Like, oh, it's inevitable. Absolutely. The way I see it is, like, even though any bean counter should be like, leave Terminator alone, we can't make money with it. Someone will say, like, yeah, but everyone knows Terminator. Everyone knows it. Everyone oh, references doesn't it. doesn't mean anything. Again. No, but, it doesn't. But um, what if we make diverse Terminators? Hmm. And, oh my God. And inclusive. We're here to spread. I'm a Terminator and I'm non binary. And, and, and basically, the Terminators will be the good guys and the humans will be the fascists. That's I wouldn't false. be surprised at yeah. all if the next one is about how the Terminators are the good guys. Yep. Oh, God. That's probably it, isn't it? They'll be like, <laughs> they'll, be like they'll be like, you have to understand humans were poisoning Terminator technology or something. And Terminators were trying to help. Terminators were trying to protect humanity. They just didn't realize or something. They'd be like, no. <laughs> Dan Vask, nope. Alien 3 is not decent. It's an abomination, and you're gay. Just wanted to say ah! it. <laughs> um, I will say the trailer, right, I wasn't as critical of. I was just more so critical of, like, the matter of this stuff. But when I found out the basic plot thing, I was like, oh, fuck, okay. I assume you guys know, right? No, but uh, I can probably guess just from the trailer. Go ahead. They got an alien. <laughs> And a girl needs oh, to fight it, boy. and the entire crew is going to die, and she'll be the last one. And she'll be except, the only one surviving. Except she'll have two cats instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> and the cat lady will win. Uh, yes. So it was like, between the events of Alien and Aliens, the alien that Ripley sent out of the airlock will be discovered, and then it will disintegrate into like a black goo, and then that will develop alien life forms on this new space oh. station and then that's gonna kill everybody <sighs> yeah good. I, I say good like, uh... it just looked so generic to me it just looks so generic and I, I look it's stuff i've seen a million times with alien but it's been done again for some reason um old out covers remember that Yep, I remember those. I remember when comics were fun and good. And movies, it wasn't offensive. It was shows. just boring. It just looked dull. No, we're 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 at that phase where they where Hollywood is probably taking some notes from the public and trying to fix it to the best of their ability. They just don't have the ability. <laughs> it's just to. not there, and and they don't have the willingness. Like they don't give a fuck about any of these franchises. Bill Murray, like. I saw Ghostbusters. It's not good. Bill Murray phoned in that performance like worse than he did in Afterlife. Oh, and God, not thanks, me. And uh, yeah, it, it just it didn't need to be made. It's completely forgettable. Is it worse than Madam Web? No, not much will be. Uh, but I but I laughed more in Madam Web. I did. wasn't intentional, but I did. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't even want to bother making a video about it. I just wanted to forget about it when I got home. Madam Web was a funny film. What can you say? It is, it is. But you, you know, these friends yeah, and the Beetlejuice trailer, which probably was the better of the bunch, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and Michael Keaton's not out there being mumbly and grumbly about it. He's actually enthusiastic about it. So maybe. But again, that's another one that's just way too late. A Beetlejuice sequel should have come out probably a couple years after Beetlejuice. That would be my guess. Uh, it's a crazy idea. What are you talking about? I know. About? I know. Uh, but th that's that's the the problem now. Um, everything is being uh, there are there is no work out there. And and you know what sucks? And this was always why I think a lot of us were calling this shit out is because we love genre. We love fantasy. We love sci-fi. We love spooky movies. We love comedies. And and uh, sci-fi, fantasy, superhero films very expensive to make. So the companies, the corporations' approach is well, let's do something with a built-in audience. But then they develop this approach of let's alienate that audience like right oh, away. No. So now they're going to blame it on fatigue, right? Which it is because they made a bunch of shit. But this stuff yeah, would still work fatigue. if they fucking cared, which they don't. And uh, 
you know, that's why when when Marvel was bought by Disney, I just it I'm like that's oof. comics are going to die. The comics are going to die from it. And they did. They did. And it sucks. So, we're still going to be fans. We have a lot of old stuff to cover, but like Hollywood's going to go into uh they're going to cut budgets and they're going to start doing more action films. I saw Roadhouse uh, oh, did it, another oh. thing that didn't need to exist. It was why, why? Fine. It was fine for streaming. I would have never fucking paid a cent to go see this in the movie theater. And Conor McGregor's acting is fucking hysterically bad. And I think he leans into it, and it actually made me and Melissa laugh quite a bit, like how bad his acting was. Uh, a couple who, decent who, fight who scenes. Who ever asked for a rap? fucking roadhouse see uh remake uh no one <laughs> no one and i, I hate to I side mean, with no, amazon no, no. but i oh. i understand why they didn't release it in the theater <laughs> dude oh. look i don't i don't think this is a particularly controversial opinion but um roadhouse ain't that good a movie period damn you know, uh i like the original but I, yeah i wouldn't go out and remake it you know, it's like Next of Kin. I fucking love Next of Kin. Another Patrick Swayze movie with Liam Neeson. I wouldn't remake it. Just watch the... Yeah, it's... Never Ending Story. They're going to remake the Never Ending Story. Oh, it is going to be Never Ending. Yeah, I know, it is Never Ending. <laughs> never Ending Story. Oh. You couldn't stop me at any <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> no way. You go. Oh, we'll, we'll that. <laughs> keep going, as we take us need everyone. <laughs> I'm going to take you places. Places that you don't necessarily want to go. Oh. So, yeah. I'll out of the car now. <laughs> Seriously, though, I think if, if Alien Romulus were like a 4 out of 10 in terms of just like, eh, it would be funny to collect that, Prey, oh. and uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife all together. You know what I mean? In terms of just... What is this era called? The man, the man, the man <laughs> era. The it's not that offensive, but it's also not worthwhile era. Just put them on a box set and just sell it as the the man collection. You can see a bunch of uh, movies that came out at the same time. You're gonna find them very uh, man. I think this is. I mean, this would have been a great year to for for streaming to do s something interesting because there's nothing coming out in the theaters, uh, and maybe they're trying. I don't know. Gentleman was awesome. It's fucking awesome. Watched it Gentleman twice. Was awesome. Can we talk about how much of a fucking annoying thing it is that that came out all at once? So, oh uh, yeah, it's hard, <sighs> hard as fuck to promote it. Hard yeah. as fuck to talk about it without sounding yeah. the same every time. We don't. We we end up talking about like a favorite payoff as opposed to all of the episodes now. The it's even hard in my head to think of like all the best bits necessarily as opposed to you know focusing on something like a performance or an arc. And well, like the fact that you're giving all the spoilers. There's well, there's that. Yeah. You, you need to talk about it, so you kind of need to put them in in context and to to generalize about ten episodes is like ah. Uh... Yeah, you, end up, you end up saying it's good. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, exactly. Go see it. That's the problem with you. So, but if it was every week, we could be having a discussion no. uh, every week about, uh, oh my God, on this week, they ended up doing this, which led to this, which led to this. This is starting to build up. I, but, uh, yeah. yeah, the binge model from, from the business side is stupid. <laughs> That's why very few people do it. And you can Sounds always. Like it's the bitch model. It's the yeah, bitch we... model. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch model, that's Hollywood, actually. Uh, the binge the model, the model. From, uh, from a business side is is retarded. It's absolutely retarded. Oh, and that's why most other streamers don't use it. Uh, because they know that if a show, every fucking streaming show, these streamers want Game of Thrones. No matter how it ended, they want Game of Thrones. They want The Sopranos. Oh. They want the why. They want a cultural phenomenon, and it's not going to fucking happen if you drop it all at once. It's just never going to happen. What bugs me is the um, they keep dipping their toe. Right, you had uh, Stranger Things was split into two halves, releasing on on uh, Netflix. It's like, oh, are they learning? And then it's like Arcane that's split into three thirds. Like, oh, they are learning. Oh. And then it was like, no, no. Well, <laughs> because oh. they they stopped losing subscribers, they won the streaming war, and I think they feel confident now. 
Uh, but it's not sustainable. It won't be sustainable. You can't drop $200 million on a series. Uh, a three-body problem, $180 million they dropped on that series. It'll be forgotten in a week. It'll be forgotten in a fucking week where it still might have garnered some interest, even though, like, I think it has a weak ending. But um, it, it would have garnered some interest if it was released weekly. And then when they take those 16 to 18 to 24 month breaks, it doesn't feel as far in between because you spent more time with the series. One Piece as well, as successful as it was, it would have been more successful if it was released weekly. And then it could have a streaming burst after it's done releasing weekly. Then the people who are waiting for the series to finish will watch it. It's it's really simple. Uh, but Netflix, I think, refused to do it because I think it's they feel like it's part of their brand, right? To to and, and binge. to binge. So now three body problem. The gentleman, yeah, we'll get season two in two and a half years. Nobody's gonna give a shit. Yeah. What's weird is the reality shows, they drop about um, them in chunks, three to four episodes. So I wonder what the difference is between like the shows evergreen. versus reality. Reality shows, not evergreen. Uh, scripted is evergreen. So that that's the difference, you know. It's almost considered like live TV. It's it's equated almost to that. What was that noise? What was, what was that? That wasn't me. I have no idea what that was. Mahler? I didn't lock the fucking basement again. He's out. Oh, no. Oh. Who got out? <laughs> Which one of them got out? Yeah. Don't worry. The dogs will get him. Uh, oh. <laughs> and by dogs, you, of course, mean... Hey, Ramsey. <laughs> Ramsey <Bolton. laughs> oh, my God. They're loyal beasts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, it is... It is Kind of a bummer because the gentleman should be doing better because it's legit good, uh, and it's not, and it's not. And and three body problem, good start. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Good start, finishes kind of meh, uh, and it really sets things up for a season two that we may or may not get. And if you do get it, two and a half years. That's too long. It's too long. Hey, like the Umbrella Academy. Remember the Umbrella Academy? Remember the oh. Umbrella Academy? <laughs> <clears throat> Not really. But. It's getting its final season that has been shortened. It started out with getting 10 episodes a season. Now it's getting six. It took lo so long to come out. Like one of its characters like turned into a 14-year-old boy. <laughs> An eternal 14-year-old boy. So, yeah, there's that. There's if there's that. any consolation in a couple of years' time. Well, and and, oh, uh, and and Stranger Things, you know, people will always bring up, hey, Stranger Things, that's a big success for Netflix. Is it? We don't know because it, it, it hasn't ended yet. I think they're filming season five now, Mahler, which means Yeah, it's what, always I, been very wonky, Stranger Things, in terms of its success, engagement, Season one was huge. huge. Yeah. Season two kind of, eh, and then season three came out and like nobody gave a shit. Then season four had rumblings, and now we'll have to see what they do with season five. But like, what a what a wonky. Uh, what can you say? It's just like Netflix. Please stop with the binge bullshit. Like it's it's so weird because coming from it from a person who actually does enjoy watching a series. Like the gentleman was really fun. I got to watch all of it straight away. But I can't see how it would have been a detriment to every week on real bbc be like you guys keep it up with the gentleman oh did you see the last episode blah, 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 how's it, happening? it wouldn't be finished for another like five weeks right yeah and by the time you hit that last episode it would be so hype we were talking about this on uh star Rift, actually the the uh the gentleman is like it, it didn't get to to succeed in the way that like house of the dragon does with i had enough time to go from not being interested in watching it to not really liking it to thinking, eh, I'm fine with it, to liking it, to liking it a lot, and then to being like, holy fuck, next episode's about to drop, here we go. It's like, that couldn't have happened if it came out overnight. I would have been like, yeah, I'll check it out. Like, Gary probably would have been like, can you check out a few episodes so we can talk about it? And I'd be like, yeah. And then if I watched like three in a row, I might be like, yeah, yeah, it was, it was all right. And then watch the rest of them and be like, yeah, there was a really good part with the series, and uh, I kind of liked, you know, all this, that, and the other thing. And, and yeah, yeah, it's a good show. I'll probably watch season two. It makes so when you. It, when you it, have it one at a time and you can think about it and just uh, it makes it more of an event and not as yeah. disposable and like you said you're not like mixing up episodes and stuff 
Uh, and it has to not just come out weekly. It has to come out at the same fucking time here in the States. Screw you in the UK. Here in the States, <laughs> 6 p.m. Western, 9 p.m. Eastern, Sunday night, Thursday night, whatever the best uh, prime time. I think those models aren't dead. And that way, <clears throat> yeah, more of a shared experience. And then more people talk about it. And then it becomes a cultural phenomenon or it becomes a giant flop. But either way, uh, you still have you have a chance. Like when you even when you dump a shitty show, it will still do better uh, on the weekly model because people won't figure out how completely shitty it is until the end, especially with D plus stuff. So, you know. And, and I mean, that's, like that's of, the way it works with D plus. Isn't that funny? I kind of understand doing it with something like Echo. I'd be like, yeah, I can understand why you want to get rid of that straight Ooh. away. I get it. That proves that why the binge model is stupid. They, they they're yeah. like, we're gonna break formula with this one, and drop it all. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah. They didn't, I, I, they, and I'm surprised they didn't go back because remember they used to drop stuff in like the middle of the night. They only recently stopped that, where they're dropping it at three in the morning, two in the morning. Uh, now they, you know, they I think they released it at nine o'clock, in the middle of January, <laughs> after being delayed. Well, they they obviously did it for. They did it for Echo because it was going to be so successful, and it just you know that's like that's like a multiplier releasing all the ones. Mm. Well, the reason I mean we've speculated the reason we think they just dumped and pumped it is because they knew that that was the only way that they stood any chance whatsoever of getting uh, something that will proc on the Nielsen rating. Yes, and it, and it came in the whole series came in nine. <laughs> barely uh, scraped the bottom and that that was in original Ow. content that was not overall it didn't even chart overall so uh Ooh. yes yeah dude i feel like some people didn't even believe it had happened and that we were all just lying we made something <laughs> up i know <laughs> I, i'm starting to side with them <laughs> yeah I, 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 <laughs> you know it might I be think right that, i think they're true yeah i think because when i watched it i was like i am not, this is not happening what i'm watching it's it was so disjointed. It was unbelievable. I've got a mortal knife wound. I'm gonna drive halfway across the United States without it being treated on a motorbike <laughs> and not die through blood loss. You just, you just didn't understand her struggle. I know. Because she had one leg and was mute, therefore she's amazing. Batman. Let's talk about Nelson Peltz almost saying MCU. Oh. He came really close to saying it. He said some pretty fun stuff. He said the message. He did say the message in his quote. But uh, he also said, why do we have to have a bunch of women? <laughs> no, he said, why do we have, bu have a bunch of women and a bunch of black people? <laughs> Which didn't help yeah, his cause. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so funny as fuck. Nelson, no! It's like, <laughs> stop it! The no, Nelson. No. Stop oh. breaking bad memes. Why, like, Nelson? Nelson? Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta pull that article up, please. Exude a goo. Uh, the woke Marvel films. Quote no, from the, the variety. variety. I mean, either one that covers what he said. Uh, there's a variety one that says Disney board foe Nelson Peltz uh, got, questions got woke Marvel films. Yeah. There you go. Sweet. I being. Uh, <laughs> so, of course, they're going to conflate Black Panther and Captain Marvel. And this is what that uh, tool on Piers, Piers Morgan tried to conflate, too. It's like, well, why do people want diverse diversity in film? Why did Black Panther succeed? Because it was based on fucking Black Panther. A character that comic readers knew that it was in the zeitgeist, a member of the Avengers. They pretty much followed his story decently, you know, kind of really a mid movie uh, and some of the best marketing of all time. Because if you went to watch Black Panther, you were fighting racism. So it was a lot of guilty white people went to go see it and then refused to give like super honest opinions about it. But I digress. Um, and Captain Marvel sandwiched between two of the biggest sequels of all time. And I think some fuckery happened, too. I think there was some fuckery. Like buying blocks of tickets for charities and stuff. Uh, movie movie studios do do this, by the way. Uh, Disney Boston. and and either way, how'd that sequel do? Where she got demoted in her own sequel. Most predictable. Um, 
barely made a hundred million worldwide. So when they announced the sequel, I'm pretty sure all of us knew, not just thought, knew it would flop. Yes. We just didn't know how, how badly, but we knew it would flop. Well, Every, yeah. Everybody in this chat knew too. Everybody fucking knew. Except it wouldn't Disney. make sense if it didn't, right? Because like, if, if Ant-Man fails, why would Captain Marvel exactly. succeed? Exactly. Yeah, but would you, if I said to you, right, Mola, the Marvels is coming out mm -hmm. and it's going to do 100 million worldwide after its cinematic run, you'd, you'd go, no. So the reason why I would entertain it, though, is what happened to Shazam. I'd be like, interesting. And it might be like, yeah, but Shazam didn't have a first one that made a billion. It's like, yeah, yeah, but Shazam wasn't placed between two of the biggest superhero movies of all time. So it's just like, and, yeah, and a I massive think... hint was dropped after Infinity War to check it out because she's going to have an integral role, but she didn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. I, I think. Yeah, I don't think we were too blown away. I, I, like I said, I think at the time that none of us predicted it would be as low as it was, but at the same time, it's like, well. That's where the winds were blowing in terms of people's interest, so I guess it makes sense. We did, I mean, I mean, we did say to the moon and back, people are going to look at this and be like, who the fuck are these people? Because um, Ms. Marvel was only shown on uh, Disney Plus to nobody and then put on CBS for nobody. And Monica Rambeau only appeared in... Uh, one division. One division. So, so people were going like, "Who are these people with her?" Yes, are these people, which was who so are these long ago. With her? Yeah, they got one division came out in 2020. So, also Brie Larson has spent the last few years managing to absolutely alienate every part of the potential audience. <laughs> so I said whatever. You'd never think it would make 100 million. That's literally what I said. And so that it wasn't shocking ultimately when you look at the other surrounding elements. And I'm pretty sure it was it was stopped reporting after two hundred million, but I assume as you're talking about like what they actually would be able to take home somewhat. No, yeah, it did, they, it did 100 million worldwide. No, 200. 200. 200. Yeah, 200. Sorry. And they stopped Sorry, reporting. 200 million. And note. then they Dang. put it on Disney Plus and then like an army of really authentic people on Twitter started going off on the day it hit Disney Plus. Do you remember going, I don't know about all the haters. This movie's pretty good. Just saying like a variation of that for about Yeah, I remember the account called uh, Joe34269 <laughs> was uh, was really giving it some. Uh, I saw uh, Marvel MCU Sim Bury Larson fan 6245873. Three, I think, with uh, well remembered, yeah, with ten Thank followers you. that joined in in January in of two thousand twenty four, yeah, yeah. getting fifty, <laughs> getting fifty thousand likes with like yes. ten comments. <laughs> 10 yeah, comments. it was which Weird. is totally fucking natural. <laughs> what are you talking about? That was so now. super authentic. Okay, yeah, guys, guys, gals, of both genders. Um, well, there's only two, so why? I... So yeah, it's been a long time since they've done anything good. <laughs> been a long fucking time. Remember, we were hopeful for, for Wandavision. It was like first couple. That was pretty first, interesting. I think first five episodes pretty good. I'd say yep. first two. First couple, I'm like, this is interesting concept, kind of Twilight Zoney. I like it. Um, yeah, I like the way they went nowhere with all the interesting stuff. And then it was Agatha all along, and then she got her own series, and then they changed the title of her series like five fucking times to where now it's just Agatha. <laughs> Is it what? They, they changed it again. Again? They changed what? it again. Now it's just Agatha. <laughs> maybe, maybe the next change will be erasing Agatha, and it just won't happen. <laughs> so, uh. kind of hoping for that. <sighs> uh, Disney board foe Nelson Peltz questions woke Marvel films. I love. I love Variety, uh, by the way, Variety is owned by Penske Media, which also mm -hmm. happens to own The Hollywood Reporter, Rolling mm -hmm. Stone, mm -hmm. Deadline, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Indie Wire. Deadline is easily the best of that bad bunch. It is because it started out good. Like Deadline was the was the one that really. Uh, it used to be against the system, and then they just. Th th there's a saying in Hollywood: it's 
it's kind of, I think it's really appropriate. I haven't heard it until recently, but apparently it's a saying. Uh, if you can't beat it, eat it. Oh. If you can't beat it, gotcha. eat it. Fight out, basically. Yep. That that saying means something completely different to Dan Vasque, but we won't get into that right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Oh my! Oh my. Uh, and he's not oh. here to defend himself, and that just makes he was it here better. earlier. Oh, he's in the chat, but I, I, I let's block him. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> do a mod J. on mod crime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Disney board phone knows some pelts. Uh, questions: Woke Marvel films. Why do I have? Uh, why do I have to have a bunch of Marvel movies? That's all women. <laughs> Why do I need an all black uh, no. cast? God, see, you know he was right there, <laughs> and we you know what he, there, what he, what he, what he actually means is like, why don't we have men and women? Why don't? Why does it have to be all of anything? I and, yeah, I know. Yeah, we all know that, but we all know that the disingenuous media will run with it, and that's why you know they, they are losing power every day, every day. Uh, Nelson Peltz, the activist, invents. Uh, investor who's going against the activist company let's be real uh agi uh agitating to win uh agitating agitating to win two disney board seats uh criticize the company's woke quote woke strategy that tool i was uh talking to on peers for one mm -hmm. called me misogynist uh, <laughs> who, who, who called said, you misogynist? Well, he said I was. Uh, he didn't call me a misogynist. He was practice. He he's all. Uh, I made a comment. Uh, you'll have to see it about freeing Scarlett Johansson's boobs from the metal encasement in <laughs> in, in, in Endgame. I'm like that should be against the law. And he's all, a misogyny aside. <laughs> misogyny aside. I'm like I was like, well, how is how it that is the complete and other opposite of misogyny. <laughs> Misogyny is the hatred of all women. I'm I'm guessing that guy doesn't like boobs as much as I do. Okay, he's yeah. objectifying uh, as that's, that's what's wrong with that. Uh, I, I like the idea though that he, he called you outright called you a misogynist. You just like nodding like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's your point? <laughs> it would be misogyny. It would be I think uh, I, chauvinist. It would be chauvinistic or sexist. It I don't know. If, I don't know if the audio is going to make it, but right after he said, it, I go misogyny. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> 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 Gary, <laughs> they told me not to hold back. I held back. I had to because I didn't want to interrupt people. But I was holy shit. He was saying that the culture war doesn't exist, and that's their new narrative, right? This culture war doesn't exist. It's misinformation from Steve Bannon mm. and the right wing. Blah 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 blah. Fuck that shit. Mm. Okay, yeah, it doesn't exist. That's why everything's fucking failing. And of course, they bring up Barbie. Oh. Barbie succeeded. We should just continue with all this shit when Barbie just made our fucking point. Barbie was a, mo a movie for women. For women. Well, I mean, is it going to be recognized that uh, everyone like Ken? Is, is that not... I, that gets <laughs> like, brought up. It gets brought up in the conversation. It, 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 the Oscars kind of... Uh, in the yeah. end, in the end uh, it was Ken. Okay? It was Ken <laughs> all Ken. along. So, uh, so yeah, they, they try to put this woke... Strategy, uh, specifically questioning Marvel's Black Panther, the Marvels, uh, which feature black and women leads, respectively. Well, Black Panther, a very successful film. Its sequel, not so successful, and a giant piece of shit, uh, by the way. And the Marvels, uh, biggest flop in MCU and MCU history. MCU history too. <laughs> and and the reason there's a prox. There's a reason there's a proxy battle at all. It's because Disney's been failing so much. Mo almost all of their movies, save for one, flopped last year. And and Nelson Peltz points that out. He's like, well, they say, I don't know anything about making entertainment, but like, look at the shit they've done the last few years. Uh, and, and he didn't even count the Disney Plus series, the Marvel and Star Wars Disney Plus series, which have not gained them a single fucking subscriber. I think the probably the most successful one, if it holds out, might be X Men ninety seven. Yeah, but is it bringing is, on new subscribers? Is How is that, by the way? You guys watched? I, I watched it. One or anything? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, no interest. Um, mm -hmm. they, they uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that they follow from the comics. They're conflating some stuff with uh, possibly Age of Apocalypse. I don't know. There's a lot of 
I, I mean, we, we didn't confirm anything, but uh, th- if you read the comics, Trial of Magneto happened. You know, it, it's it's there. I, I don't think it's uh, terrible, but it's a Disney Plus show, so I fully expect it to be terrible by the time it's done. Uh, the 81-year-old uh, Peltz, who has admitted he never claimed to have experience in the media business, made the comments about the Marvels and Black Panther in a recent interview with the Financial Times. Why do I have to have a Marvel movie that's all women? Based. Uh, <clears throat> Peltz. Peltz asked rhetorically, not that I have anything against women, but why do I have to do that? Why can't I have Marvels that are both? Why do I need an all black cast? And they're going to focus on that. But he's saying like, why, you know, that would be like asking for an all white cast. Nobody wants that. There's for people who've even like just basically followed Marvel pretty diverse Nobody's saying we don't want diverse people in it. We just want the characters to be the characters from the comic book, and we don't want to have a bunch of people who admittedly have never read the comic books, don't care about the comic books, try to press their personal identity and identity politics on these stories to turn them into fucking propaganda. Just adapt the fucking stories. You'd be doing better. We wouldn't be having this conversation at all. Uh, But uh, the, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Uh, a lot of people commenting on this shit, by the way, you know, that this writer has this writer fucking watched every Disney plus show, every, every MCU movie. Fuck no. Fuck no. They have no they idea what they're talking about. They don't even know which about. ones they haven't watched. Yeah. Like the, it's got to keep track of. Uh, Black Panther does not have an all black cast, nor does the Marvels. Well, I don't think he said Black Panther. You said Black Panther variety. I don't think he said Black Panther. Uh... And, and the Marvels doesn't have an all-female cast. So when he says all, he means most, but they're going to go uh, literal with this. Okay, well, I would say Samuel Jackson did act like a grandma in uh, in the Marvels. He wasn't acting like a dude. Like, what the hell? I, I don't know guy? what he was. I, I have no idea what he was acting as. All I know is he certainly wasn't acting as Nick Fury. There is no Nick Fury anymore after a certain after Secret Invasion. Now, I, in one of my videos, and it's like oh. a, it's a year old now, so I'll have to update it. I did the math on main characters being not sub characters, main superheroes and villains that were have been introduced post Endgame, and it's two to one female to male, two to one female to male. Right after Kevin Feige said we're going to basically make the MCU half women. So I'm going to take the man at his word, and I see his actions, and yes, it's two to one at this point. Uh, and and, and uh, some of the rebuttals have tried to, like, conflate in sub-characters and, and cameos and shit. I'm not counting that. It's just main villains and superheroes. Do we need to have Egyptian superhero in Moon Knight? No. No, Moon Knight should have been about fucking Moon Knight. That's it. Uh, Iger. Uh, Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Back up there, Tiger. Are did you I, saying that... Did, uh, did I get misogynist you, again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you took a role away from um, that absolutely unbelievable character of Egyptian fucking superhero. <laughs> uh, she has a name. It is Moon Knight Girl. It is very much... <laughs> Uh, blanking on, I'm blanking on the name. It's like it's not dung beetle, but I'll just say dung beetle. It's the it's scarab a, or whatever. Scarab, yeah, scarlet scarab, scarlet scarlet scarab. Thank you. There's who, not scarlet. Who was a dude, <laughs> by the way? So of, of course, yeah. I think dung beetle is better. I liked. Hey, do you remember when um in Moon Knight the uh the ex the wife the wife not ex wife yet the the wife was so. Uh, concerned for her her soon to be ex husband because uh, of the messages that she had sent and received that she decided to go look for him uh, with her divorce papers. <laughs> I remember. Hey, remember when they did Chinese gibberish? Ni hai shukashudo. <laughs> Fucking, they got DSP to consult on the on the fucking Chinese. 
I love that. And, par- then, and then he went chicky chong chan chicky chicka choo. <laughs> Should have got John Cena. Oh yeah. my god. John I- Cena knows Mandarin. That's the problem. <laughs> well, you gotta know how to apologize to the CCP. So yeah. you gotta learn it. He-, he knows how to bend the fucking knee. <laughs> Oh my god. I love that Perry got that into my acolyte video. I don't know if anybody caught it, but he me has shukashudo is in there. <laughs> Fucking Perry. Uh okay. Next uh, they'll be getting uh fake uh sign language people to come and just fucking stand there and do all this. Here we go. Uh, right. Well, oh wait, that happened and that was funny as fuck. Again, again, it happened again. It did. Again. Oh, no. <laughs> Ah, that's so good. <laughs> I can't get mad when it's fucking funny. <laughs> oh, I love it every time that happens. Yeah. The fake sign language person. And nobody catches it till afterwards. Yes. <laughs> Can you sign? Yeah. They just. Oh, okay. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you know what I said? No. Brilliant. Excellent. We can definitely work together. Uh, so we're gonna bring up Black Panther, starring Chadwick Boseman, the late. Chas- Chaswick Bozeman was Bozeman was a bona fide blockbuster, reaping in 1.35 billion at the worldwide box office. While 2023's Marvel was a flop with 206 million total haul. The earlier 2019 Captain Marvel, by the way, uh, with Brie Larson, grossed 1.13 billion. So you don't want to bring up the fact that uh, the the Black Panther sequel that didn't have Black Panther in it did half as much, dropped 50 percent. And um, I don't even know what the percentage is. You'd have to do the math. What What's the percentage lost? Is that 80%? What was what did it make? Okay, so Captain Marvel made $1.13 billion and yeah. sequel made $206 million. <laughs> 85%, 84% drop. There you go. There you go. So we had a 50, 50 to 55% drop. And it, but we're not going to bring that up. Because Iger is doing everything great, and everything that wasn't great was Chapek's fault. Iger, speaking last fall to the New York Times Deal Book Summit, acknowledged that Disney productions should focus on storytelling rather than advocating particular agendas. He's just saying that to appease uh, the investors. He's full of shit. He has no intention yeah. of ever fucking changing that whatsoever, and we all know that. He also said for like four times throughout that year, we're going to focus on quality over quantity admitting that you were just throwing shit out there by the way he tries to uh blame chapik for that chapik's not blameless here that guy was just a fucking an, an empty suit um bob Iger greenlit all that shit chapik was was a ceo for 11 months <laughs> all that stuff was in production well before he fucking came in what a bunch of horseshit! And, and, including he, he was brought, he was put there to be a stool pigeon. He did his job. Yep, and uh, he got paid handsomely for it. And he's on some island with Diddy now, getting blown by two hookers with his NDA. To the five years old. Ugh. Ugh, that went dark. Um, so did that's racist. Number one. Sorry. Oh wait, wait, no. wait. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Also, just the fact that you said that's racist, number one. I, I, number I, one. I, I, I love so we the have, fucking Star Trek quota. We have, <laughs> we have the racism gong. That's good. I like that. Yeah. The gong of racism. Uh, uh, create. Oh, listen to this. Uh, so he says we're not going to advoc- advocate particular agendas. Remember, this is also the same man who's basically said. Well, there are no agendas. We we aren't pushing any politics. We're right, and you're wrong. Yes, the politics is settled. Yeah, gay so, relationships have lowered. So now he says the movies. creators lost sight of their number one objective. Uh, needed to be. We need to entertain first. It's not about messages. Iger said at one point. Pelt said uh, in the FT interview. People go to watch a movie or a show to be entertained. They don't go to get a message. Watching Critical Drinker confirmed. Okay. Yes. Yeah. By the way, Critical Drinker is infinitely more entertaining than anything coming out of Hollywood. Uh, yeah. I want to mention, also, by the way, I find it funny, these writers, like if they were told, okay, you have to write a story where a girl is captured by a dragon and some knight has to go oh. kill it and save her, okay? Can you do that? I feel like they wouldn't know how. 
even if you made that re level of restriction. No, they like, would. There's nothing you, else. No, you know what they would make? Damsel. Damsel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have you seen that, Mahler? I can't bring myself. No, I to still see haven't. It. I haven't seen it yet. All I know, well, it was funny because Drink. I watched was like, Drinker's oh, it was Review. So bad. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. obviously, it was bad. Drink. <laughs> I just watched Drinker's Review, and I'm like, okay, good. Yeah. I watched Drinker's Review and Lauren Chen's review. Oh, I haven't Dan seen Lauren's yet. I will watch Lauren do a review of Damsel. I was watching. Um... <clears throat> Quiet on set. Instead, have you guys heard of that? Yeah, I I've started heard watching. Yes, I started watching. Oh. That's it's, gonna be a tough. Uh, that's gonna be a tough watch. Yeah, it is rough. Um, and sad too. Obviously, Yo, like the, yeah. You really hope something like the, like documentaries like that make a huge difference. I don't know how much is actually gonna change, but that um, God, no, the amount zero. of people, amount of people destroyed by uh, everything that's going on. For anyone who doesn't know, it's just like a documentary about Nickelodeon and behind the scenes of how many people got a chance to take full advantage of children a lot. Um. And I think it was that documentary that revealed that Drake Bell was one of the like significant victims of all of it. Um, <sighs> I haven't gone through the whole thing yet, but him, he can't like bring himself to describe anything, basically. And he just says oh. that, imagine the worst thing ever for way too long, which sucks. Um, well, uh, you, you often, we, and we'll get real quick. Have you seen Open Secret? Well, yeah, you got to see Open Ooh. Secret. Um, and uh me too stopped right when it got to dudes and kids it just stopped dead you ever wonder about that i'm sure you don't because you know the answer it had to because you're protecting a lot of powerful p people i hope this documentary like gets it going again uh it'll probably just turn into another exploitive power grab in hollywood because that's the way they fucking operate but uh yeah if you love your kids don't send them to hollywood just don't it's insane how uh, how people can get in there and take full advantage, and there's just not no like stop gaps to prevent it from happening. Um, I think it's episode two or something. There's just like a girl who's on a computer having a back and forth like email relationship with some producer on the show, which is already weird. And then her mum, like you know, she's like, "Why are you crying?" She's like, "He sent me pictures of himself naked. I'm not sure what to oh. do." Like, it's like, what the fuck? And then uh, through the investigation, they break into his house, and I think it's something like 10,000 pictures they find. Am I the only parent who just goes straight to, like, fuck the cops. <laughs> I'm going to that guy's house. <laughs> the, I mean, Take what do you know? Everything All you need they... is uh, a kettle and uh, sugar. Or a hammer. Hammer's good, but kettle and sugar, that's a very nice combination. Back to Disney. <laughs> we'll talk yeah. about we'll talk that. I'm sure that'll come up later when we talk uh, about. Did he do it? Yes, did, oh. I put that did, in the title. He, I did. did he do it? <laughs> I did. I'm a dad. He did. He P did. He do it. Allowed to make dad jokes. It's compulsory. Uh, Disney has framed the proxy vote campaign by Pelt's uh, train partners as driven by longstanding personal agenda harbored by former Marvel Entertainment chairman Perlmutter against Iger. I mean, Iger did fuck Perlmutter over and call him a racist multiple times. I, you know, I'd be a little pissed too. Uh, Train controls roughly $3.5 billion worth of Disney stock, 79% of which is owned by Perlmutter last year. Disney terminated Perlmutter's employment. By the way, uh, I think... Perlmutter owns more stock. No, I'm pretty sure Perlmutter owns more stock than Bob Iger and anybody on the fucking board. And that's something like Peltz needs to hammer home all the time. It's like this board does not own a lot of stock. They don't have a lot of skin in the game, but there are a bunch of yes men for and women for Iger. Uh, as Marvel chairman, Perlmutter famously fought Marvel Studios chief Kevin Feige over making Black Panther and Captain Marvel. Uh, on the belief that movies with black or women lead characters would not commercially successful until Iger uh, intervened to overrule Perlmutter. But he was still there, by the way. Uh, in 2019, memoir, Ride of a Lifetime, which uh, I read, by the way. Uh, he goes over all this again. Uh, Peltz asked during the FT uh, interview if Feige... Uh, should be removed as president of Marvel Studios. I'm not ready to say that, but I question his record, and I would too. At this point, 
Let's look at the reality of it. Feige completely took over right around uh, Civil War. Right around Civil War. Is that, that's when Feige was in complete control. A um, couple hits, building up to Infinity War, Endgame. Eh, not a great movie. Uh, after that, it's been complete shit. And, and the one decent movie, or the two decent movies, he, he had a hand in, but Sony produced No Way Home. And uh, which I liked a lot, and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which I thought was decent. There's two people here on this panel who hated it. I mean, uh, no, no, I, I said it was mid. Mid, okay. Mom, yeah, I'm the one that hates it. Yeah, you're on the hate side, <laughs> or at least yeah. closer to hate. Than so, mid. so wait, so we've got a hate, a mid, and a quite liked. Quite liked, except for Warlock. What they did to Warlock was a fucking <laughs> crime. It was fucking retarded. Um, like why bother bringing him in at that point? But I digress. Uh, in a news statement Monday, Peltz's train claimed it uh, supports Mr. Iger as a candidate for the board and CEO and asserted that its goal was uh, not uh, was to replace certain Disney board members with new blood. However, train withheld his its votes for Iger's reelection to the Disney board. So he's come out and said he basically doesn't want to. And that's enough of that. Uh, doesn't want to fire Iger. I think he should. But uh, I am also of the belief, and I tweeted it today, I want Bob Iger to get every fucking thing he wants. And he will get everything he deserves after that. Well, D Disney will get everything he deserves. Yes, they, they will. So, I, you know, uh, the chaos is great if uh, the vote happens in uh, a few days. <clears throat> and uh, somebody was kind enough to send me their voting card and how it's pre-filled out. Oh. How it's mm. fucking pre-filled out. Uh, and, uh Yeah. Some crazy shit, but um, ah, fuck. I you know I don't know if Pelts can change anything, uh, and uh, Disney's so big it can't change at this point. Even if they like shut every fucking thing down, we're talking two or three years before they can get something right. And and you know what's gonna give them uh some some uh some cred? Although I believe it'll be false. Is is Deadpool three? When Deadpool, if Deadpool three fails, oh holy shit! It like this is kind of a can't miss. It's a layup. So if it does that, fail, but dude, that's just it. It's a, it's a barn door, and I just I wouldn't be surprised if the ball just suddenly flew up into the air and made, I I really wouldn't. I do feel like even if it's terrible, it'll make money because of the fact that people are hoping yeah. this one will be good. Yep. Like they see this is like this is the one that was worth seeing. They gotta lean like, into it. They just gotta. They just gotta. Because look, if you bring it back, characters like Electra and stuff like, like you know, shitty Electra, then uh, just lean into it. Just completely lean into it and and make it lame, but just make it lame and funny. Yeah, I mean, there's certain signs that they want to turn things around, but they want to turn things around in their own way with what they have, which is impossible, and we've said it time and time again, the only way you turn things around and you won't be able to achieve the same success as your, your first run is recast everybody. Can I ask you a question? Sure. No. I mean, this is to everybody, including the Asian one. Is that Just technically you... a racist? No. Yeah. Yeah. People? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um... Who here, I know Mauler can't do a show of hands, but you can give an I or a nay. Uh, who here in, in, in the panel, even chat, you can play this in the comments section if you want. Um, uh, who here cast any of the Hollywood movies that we've seen ever in our lives? Mm, I will. Uh, I did. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have, I've never, I've never, I, I've spent a lot of money going to the cinema and watching films and buying Blu-rays and DVDs and VHS tapes and 4Ks and books and comics and merchandise and, and, and all that from said movies, in essence, putting money into that company so they can then use that company to produce more product. Uh, so why is it our fault or perceived fault this thing that they're correcting that has made them so successful over decades upon decades which is now falling down around them because of their 
correction due to us? Yes. It's our fault. I mean, I'll, I'll admit it. I cast Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> it was a joke. And they didn't know that it was a joke. I put slash s after it, which a lot of people I don't cast, know. Sarcasm. I cast Annette Benning as as Marvel. I did. A gr- I'm a gr- every a gr- Asian. I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm. A- there could be a song instead of "I'm Every Woman." <clears throat> you should do "I'm, I'm a- Every Asian." <laughs> <laughs> In everything. <laughs> Wait, that's uh, Michelle Yeoh. No, that's her. You, I am uh, by the way, your last episode, <laughs> you did a really good job in the last episode of Shogun. Just wanted to oh, say. thank you. I worked well so hard. <laughs> That's a good Oh, show. you know, speaking of Michelle Yeoh, I actually watched, mm. um, either of you guys kept up to date at all with Kenneth Branagh's uh, Poirot films? No, not at all. No, I saw the first one. Um, I didn't care that much about the first two. I saw A Haunting in Venice. That's the new one. I actually mm. quite liked it. It's good, good. huh? Okay, I'll check it yeah. out. Yeah, and it's cool as well because um, it's one of the latter life stories of Poirot and that most people are less aware of it and they decided to, I guess, adapt that in the hopes of um, telling one people aren't as familiar with, at least somewhat, and um, I was happily unfamiliar with it and there's um, Michelle Yeoh is in it and she's pretty awesome. Yes. She can like, be good. The, uh, the medium, doesn't she? When she's not in Star Trek. Oh yeah, I mean, you know. yeah. <laughs> um, the basic is just yeah, it's it's Poirot versus the supernatural. It's uh, are there ghosts? Are there horrible supernatural things happening, or is it as simple as someone who's trying to murder people? And he's I'm gonna very go with the latter. <laughs> well, uh, part of why I enjoyed it so much is the fact that you know they they balance that really well. And yes. uh, yeah, yeah, they, they they do that. I, I mean, to me, you're never gonna get better than the uh, David Suchet. Poirot, but uh, there's a lot of really good dialogue in it, which is what was surprising to me. Um, a lot of people said things that made me go like, "Huh, that's interesting." And, you know, uh, there's a like there's a conversation that Michelle Yeoh and Kenneth Branagh have about basically their their points of view about life and why they kind of denigrate each other and think of each other as sort of, uh, but at the same time that they both, uh, I, I like the way she describes. She she says they both talk to the dead. Uh, they give voice to the dead, you know. Ah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Position yeah. is to, you know, try Avenge. and speak for them. Yeah. yeah. It's lots of, lots of, I was surprised by it. I was expecting to watch it and never speak of it, you know, and <laughs> just be like, well, that yeah. happened. But, it bombed miserably, didn't it? Um, probably because I haven't heard anything about it, you know, anyway. It, yeah, I think it bombed miserably at the uh, faces. Though I had to look around and they said they're already having like rumblings about a potential fourth one. The, the, the end of the film sets up a fourth film. You probably aren't very expensive. You don't need to set up a film in a Poirot because the self-contained. Yeah, well, I mean, I I don't mean that in like a after credits way. I mean it in a sense of <laughs> like <laughs> not not like a they find a Joker card. I mean that he a character development. He yeah he at the beginning of the film he's kind of retired and by the end of the film he has a change of heart about a lot of things and it's kind of you know it's it's a good kind of they can make more. Um, but yeah, apparently it was 60 million budget, 120 gross worldwide. So yeah, not fantastic. But maybe enough to make another one. I don't know. Sorry. Typing stuff to X-Ray Girl. I probably just could have told her. A bit easier. <laughs> could you pull up the uh, Hollywood Depression article? Because it just makes me happy. Yeah, got it. Okay. Remember that strike? <clears throat> Remember that strike? All the unions went on strike. The producers uh, were playing hard line. They're all fighting over AI, a technology that they will not be able to stop, whether you like it or not. doesn't really matter at this point. Um, well, this is from a few days ago. Chris Gore sent it to me. They also did a good video on it, very good video on it, on, uh, on Film Threat. Hollywood contraction hits entertainment executive jobs. I thought, oh, there, no. I thought there wasn't enough executives on the set of Miss, uh, on the Marvels. Uh, this is a full-scale depression. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, da, 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 da. You know, oh, go ahead. Save full-scale. I don't know why. It's just my brain. It reminds me of uh, Smile Tyree says, it's a full-scale attack ratio, the nest egg. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. Fucking Gooba puppet goes to protect the giant egg. <laughs> 
That's why I see Hollywood. <laughs> it's a full scale depression. I love that. I, I want one of the puppets with the little freaking. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's funny so as good. Fun. The fact so... that they shoot it. <laughs> I, know, I know. Like Wesley just. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. It's fucking great. Uh, good stuff. Uh, LinkedIn is usually used by professionals for networking with people in their field, posting updates when they get a new job or congratulate congratulating friends on their promotions these days as one former industry type type put it it's become a therapy site for unemployed entertainment executives oh no who share their frustrations over the lack of opportunities in hollywood amid major contraction uh i've seen lots of downturns lots of job losses but i've never seen anything like this one veteran top tv executive said this is a full-scale depression for the entertainment industry. Over the past year, there have been waves of layoffs at Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery, Paramount, NBC Universal, Amazon, Amazon, the trillion-dollar company Amazon laying people off, uh, Lionsgate, which uh, acquired E1, Netflix, Sony, Fifth Season, and most talent agencies, including CAA and UTA. The dire situation. By the way. All organizations that completely s supported lockdowns while they were allowed to work uh, completely uh, ignored and uh, othered anybody who was against the jab within their own organizations and oh. then showed all kinds of unity uh, a, a year later with the strike, a year and a half later. Mm. Re so remember, COVID went on for a very long time in California. Mm-hmm. I love to remind people this. I've been in Texas for two years, uh, two years and one month. California lifted the mask requirement the week I left. The week I left. That's how fucking long it was. Uh, the dire situation bordering on worst case scenario. The season TV executive said was created by a perfect storm of COVID. No. No. Government reaction to COVID. You were allowed to work through COVID. Okay. Uh, strikes and poor management decisions coming home to roost. Remember when they set up the craft table literally across the alleyway from a restaurant that was not allowed to open up? Out outdoors. 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 Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That poor woman. She's still around. Yep. Her, her place is still around and it's kicking and that's good. Good. And it would be great if she. <laughs> She out-survived Hollywood. That'd be fucking justice. Well, if she didn't have a jab, she might. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. She probably didn't. Uh, driven by short-sighted movies by media companies aimed at goosing their quarterly reports to appease Wall Street. Not going to argue with any of that. Absolutely not going to argue with any of that. You might want to, like, add the DEI policies that are connected to ESG and BlackRock and Vanguard. Uh, that really drove uh, baking a lot of this shit into scripts and ruining your stories. You might want to put that one in there too, and uh, alienating half half the country. I think that one's kind of important. They never bring it up uh, because that's misinformation. Supposedly that's misinformation. So half of you are not really pissed off. At sure, all. sweet. So never mind. Show's over. No. Uh, those venting about their experiences on LinkedIn say that they have, I haven't been on LinkedIn forever. I have a LinkedIn. I don't know. I don't know why I still do, uh, say that they have, uh, sent hundreds of jobs applications and never got a response to the majority of them. Well, I mean, that's pretty fucking normal for Hollywood, even in the good days, but, uh, not even for, for, from HR, <laughs> Uh, some have been on the sidelines for more than a year while trying to pick up consulting and other part-time gigs to pay the bills. Trade school. Wait, are they saying that they need the money to pay their bills? The internet yes. bill? The electricity bill? Electricity bill. Hello. There are jobs out there. Uh, the more senior executives turn to headhunters. Turn to headhunters. So headhunters are back. There was a time that there wasn't, they weren't really needed. Uh, I have certainly, uh, there's certainly 
I have certainly an influx of executives that reach out and say they're looking for the next job and stop Hollywood ex- and and top Hollywood executive uh, recruiter Jamie Waldron, senior partner, global head of sports media plus entertainment at Modern Executive Solutions. Fucking what the hell is that name? Uh, I'm- <laughs> Jesus. Uh his he can't con- help you now. His conservative estimate is that a good 20% of the VP and above executive workforce in media and entertainment is out of work from a year ago. I'm, I'm, wait, I'm trying to shed a tear. I'm trying to look for a fuck to give. Give me a second. Oh, don't have any. Fresh out. Uh, based on the observations, legal and marketing executives have been heavily impacted, followed closely by development execs. Uh, there is no doubt. Uh, uh, there, there is no doubt a contraction. Waldron added. There is no doubt a contraction. Okay. Uh, it just makes it tough in the short term. I feel like with a lot of good executives. No, no such thing. Uh, I can't meet everybody that wants to meet to talk about their uh, about their unemployment or his layoffs now happening. For many newly empl- unemployed execs, it's been a major adjustment. Losing a lofty salary with bonuses and stock. Well, it was all based oh. on bullshit, you fucking morons. You didn't think, would you think that party was going to go out forever? Yes, they did. It's like, yes, hey, absolutely we're did. making all these really expensive shows on streaming platforms that make zero fucking money. Zero dollars. <laughs> our, our jobs are justified. Yep. But also perks such as company cars and expense accounts. Uh, most of those uh, have met... Uh, most of those who have met with Waldron have put on a brave face, saying that they feel great about taking a break and are happy to spend time ah. with their kids. No, they're not. <laughs> and that's just their kids out of marriage from yeah. different people. And no some are scared. honest. No, I'm not scared. Uh, during the strikes, Waldron, those uh, who... who whose father, 91, is a former writer and still a WGA member, said... Uh, looking at the fear and listening to all the stories of the writers and actors uh, that are losing their houses. Oh. What was kind of lost in the story was executives were doing the same thing. Executives that were laid off were losing their houses and the private school tuition for their kids oh. and the oh, job boo-hoo. loss didn't come back because of it. Uh, either the contraction of the industry or they're waiting for them to come back. Oh, my heart is just bleeding right now for them. So, yeah, the, the executives are 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 getting fired as well. We, we've read enough. You can read the rest if you want. <clears throat> Those poor executives, they lost their expense accounts, guys. I know. And the private school tuition for the kids. Right? And the company car. Oh, and they're... Uh ostentatious houses mm-hmm. and uh rodriguez the uh pool boy pool boys i'm sure there's two yeah well maybe. you got javier in pools. the garden so you know uh, javier 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 uh, sorry the gardener why not, javier. why not why not uh yeah so everybody saw this coming it's now happening and uh, it's not going to end anytime soon because we're looking at two years of delays. We're just passing March, which was really heavy with releases. If you look what's coming out, there's nothing, dude. There's absolutely nothing. Like Deadpool 3 is the biggest thing coming out. That's at the end of July. There's a few movies here and there, but I was looking at the release schedule and shit. We got Rebel Moon. It's not coming. Wa- Rebel Moon Part Two in April. Civil War. <laughs> Rebel Civil Moon. War. Oh, and Civil War. Jesus. I might watch Civil War because that just looks like the biggest pile of fucking shite. And I'm not. Mm. I watched Deadpool, but yeah, I can't. I can't say I've got any interest. Are, are you excited about it though? No, no, no. And this is like a movie I should be excited about. Absolutely, yeah. Hugh Jackman going to be in the costume. A bunch of old X Men coming back. We might get some crazy cameos. I should be excited. I'm like, eh. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 
It's like yeah. hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. Well, yeah. Yeah, kind of, yeah. See, like, it's going to be that thing again. Like, let's say Ben Affleck did have all showed up. I would be like, ah, that'll ah. be like, uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. And that now, was fun for a second. If Nick Cage shows up as Ghost Rider, that'd be kind of cool. You know, Lou Ferrigno gets in there as the Hulk. But, like, it'll probably be a, a CGI blobby mess like Christopher Reeve and Flash. Oh, no. Mm. And considering they just finished filming principal photography a couple of months ago, <laughs> which is nuts, dude. Totally nuts. Yeah, because yeah, you can get everything done in a couple of months in post with these type of films. Sure. Sure. Uh, I think it's time to talk about Diddy <laughs> because, you know, oh. we are known for our hip hop yes. knowledge here. <laughs> On the real BBC. Oh, yeah. But everybody's talking about it. I don't know what's happened since this morning. I don't know if he's in custody. I don't know if he... No, he's he's deuced, uh, he's deuced on his private jet out of the country. Well, they said uh, TMZ showed video of him at, uh, at a Florida airport, a private airport. So I don't know if he was detained there. And, like, they used his plane to get rid of stuff. That's for the political pundits to talk about. Uh, but there's been a lot of uh, rumors. And, like, I can equally believe he did it. I could also equally believe our federal government is just using him as a fall guy for something else. I don't trust anybody. Just want to make that fucking clear. But uh, it's crazy. I have no idea. I like it when it's somebody. I, I saw something. Where it's like one of the neighbors says, "Yeah, this guy gets busloads of kids ferried to his house in the night," and I, oh. I was just thinking to myself, "So, so why didn't you do anything about it? Yeah, why didn't you call the police then if if you thought that was good? Oh, you didn't, but now that the uh, the press are in your face and you got a microphone and fifteen minutes of fame, now you're just gonna say some? I was like, fucking hell! Oh, if I saw busloads of kids being ferried to a fucking neighbor's house during the night." I might just want to give the police a, you know, I, I'm just little heads up. This any, hey, yeah, I don't know if this is anything, um, but this is odd. There's a busload of weird. kids yeah. going to a mansion at three in the morning. Ah. I want to check it out. Yeah, it just just looks odd. A little strange. And these these kids are looking like they should be tucked up in bed. Yeah, a little suspicious. You know? yeah. yeah. Magic school bus doesn't usually come this way. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It's maybe got maybe candy no, written late. on the side of the truck. Maybe it's not mm. that suspicious in that part of town. Well, because it happens Hollywood. a lot. Yeah, but... da, 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 Peter Wood. Uh, Sean Diddy Combs residences, which are giant, by the way. He's got a couple bucks. Uh, rated mm. by the federal agents amid uh, oh. sexual trafficking claims. Uh, Ooh, yeah. The music mogul uh, was served. A fifth sexual assault lawsuit, including allegations of trafficking, last month. Just get, just paint Warhammer figures. Get a hobby, dude. Just keep writing uh, tunes. Yeah. Well, that's just isn't take okay. a gardening. I am not making excuses for any of these degenerate fucks. Fuck them. But maybe that happens to to. When you're that fucking rich and you're that jaded, I I don't know. Uh, I still think there's a lot of people who are that rich and aren't that jaded and don't do that stuff. So uh, maybe you were just a piece of shit all along. I don't know. I don't know if he's even guilty or not. But Hollywood's we don't guilty. Know shit. Hollywood's guilty. I, I that I'm convinced of. They have been covering crap like this up for years, and maybe our government has too. <laughs> Probably, but Dude. um. BBC here in the UK. Dude. Covered for a bunch of fucking pedos. Yeah. Probably still do. Jimmy Savile. That is some dark. Dude. Uh, Jimmy Savile, Ralph the, Harris. Uh, the documentary more. I watched on that. Holy crap. Dude. The Netflix one? Yeah. 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 Oh. Oof. Tough one. It was extremely well made. Yes. Uh, the amount of references and the people they spoke to and the editing and like the the fucking the way they strung together basically history. Dude, Did you ever the... see um Louis Theroux 
Weird Weekend with Jimmy Savile. Yes. I think that's back up on Netflix now. And that is I just... actually watched his um his initial interview and then his follow up once all this stuff came out and Yeah. Man, you can tell how much regret and guilt he has about not being, you know, not being stronger with him, not yeah. pushing further, not digging down further, because he would have been so close, probably, without realizing I mean, it. Yeah, they, I mean, they kind of got to something one night, didn't he? When Louis actually went to bed and he was left with his, yeah. with his, his producer, and the camera was still rolling, you know, still had the camera on the table rolling, and then he sort of went into how they, when he ran the nightclub, how he'd take uh, people into the uh, basement, tie them up, and beat them. Yep, that was something Dude, that was just going to said. hospitals? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, climbing oh, through fucking windows and shit. God. Um, that's horrible. So that's just one person. Imagine all the depravity and crap we haven't heard and, and, and the people who are still working out there and just completely getting away with it. Uh, it, it, it would, it could, ru- I mean, it could absolutely take down Hollywood. That's why they've co- covered it up so much. So much. Um, and they haven't, and Hollywood hasn't done a very good job of dissuading people from thinking that, from, you know, it's a label they've earned the old pedal wood homes along, uh, belonging to Sean Diddy Combs in Los Angeles, New York, and Miami were raided by federal agents on Monday, a month after the music mogul was sued for sex trafficking, a representation for Homeland security. Dude, that finds so much busty Asian porn if they fucking raided my house right now it's just like a tifa vault i'm not surprised oh it's just it's <laughs> just like every possible conceivable a tifa vault <laughs> the vault is tifa as well a yeah, right. to open up our yeah. boobs to get in yeah. there yeah, yeah. Like, you gotta, you you have gotta to spin you can, the boobs in the right direction spin the nipples, spin the nipples yeah <laughs> uh, they're, they're like the barrels if you look closely they've got numbers on them going round. you just you just tweak the nipples and then you, then you just is it like clockwork orange? You can just get milk right out of your boobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and there's like an Indiana Jones level secret path that leads to another teeth of vault. And then yeah. it's oh the my thing. god! It just keeps that's, going down. That's like, the good stuff. Keep yeah. going deeper and deeper yeah. into Tifa. Oh, what? that's what I said. That's what I said. When the, when the police find out they've broken it, he's like, "Did they get to the tier ten vault?" Yeah. <laughs> Wait, there's a tier ten. We're at number three. <laughs> You're like, okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, shit. Sure. Uh, I mean, um, uh, can I have some water? Please? By the way, what am I actually being charged with? <laughs> Monopolizing. Yes. T- Tifa. Um, Those are NFTs, sir. Those are NFTs. Non fungible Tifa? Titties. Non fungible <laughs> titties. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, boy. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a representative of Homeland Security Investigations, New York Planted. said. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pl- <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I got to read this. Okay. It's a, that's an organization I despise, by the way, and should be disbanded, but whatever. Uh, New York said in a statement that the raids were ex- ex- uh, executed as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from Homeland Security Los Angeles, Homeland Security uh, Miami, uh, CSI Miami, and CSI Los Angeles, and our local enforcement partners. They added that we will and Chris provide... Hansen. And Chris Hansen. <laughs> uh, we will provide further information as it becomes available. Representatives of Combs did not respond to no request shit. for comment. That's it. Or no, it's not it. Okay. Uh, the event come about a month after Combs was served uh, with a lawsuit, which we've already heard about, uh, whose real name is Cassandra Venture, sued him in November for assault. In a statement Monday, uh, Douglas Wigdor, a lawyer for Ventura, said that we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those who have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved content. Content. Well, alleged. 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 I'm just reading the article. I know, I know. I'm just saying he might want to say alleged. I don't don't, Maybe he doesn't have any fucks to give. I don't know. Ventura, who accused Combs of repeatedly uh, assaulting and physically abusing 
her for nearly a decade, later reached a settlement with Combs. In a statement at the time, Combs lawyer Benjamin Braffman clarified that the decision to settle was in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Sure. Subsequent suits against Combs include accusations of a woman who was a minor at the time of the illegal assault and claims that Combs forced Jones to solicit uh, sex workers, not to be confused with Kotaku editors, for the bad boy but, records but founder. She is a, she's a self-confessed sex worker. Uh, she's a hooker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she multiple... said that she's, she fucks for money. She's a hooker. Yes. Multiple suits also alleged that Combs drugged his victims, and one included a claim that he choked a woman until she passed out, later urging her not to report the incident. Mm. The incident. I mean, if it's consensual. I'm just saying, if you choke play, it's uh, called gasping. Okay, and, uh, but if it's, if if you, it's consensual. It, it, it doesn't matter to the point where if you're knocking people out, like at that point, like that would be considered assault no matter what. Uh, Combs has consistently. What, what, if she, what if she didn't say the safe word? I don't fucking know. You can't speak when you're getting choked, can you? These aren't things I'm so I glad do, that you least said so choked. I wouldn't fucking know. Um, Combs has consistently denied all allegations, saying in a statement last December that I did not do any uh, any of the awful things that's being alleged. <laughs> I did not do it. I did, I did not. not. <laughs> I did he do it. I, I did he do it. I did oh, he do hi, it. <laughs> oh, hi, Piggy. Oh, hi, Tupac. The memes were, the memes, the internet will internet. The internet will internet. And it was kind of, oh, I'm, hell yeah. I was laughing. It was pretty funny. Was in the uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any, uh, is he in custody? Do we know? I don't believe so. I don't think he is. The I last don't... I heard, he might have gotten his private jet and left the country. That's the last I heard. Okay. Well, We'll find out what happens. I have no... Fr I, uh, all's, I'll say is, uh, yes, this is happening in Hollywood a lot. They catch one guy. There's a thousand out there. There's a thousand out there that we'll never hear about. Some of them are very powerful. Probably heads of studios, heads of state. Uh, Don't you think that uh, Harvey Weinstein thought he was untouchable? Microsoft. Uh, oh, just, you know, I'm just speculating. I don't just know. Just speculate. What, is that the Microsoft that uh, says... We don't want to put attractive women in any of our games. In actual fact, oh, by the way, Microsoft using a very sweet baby ink language. We need to bring joy. Remember when Kim Belair kept saying the word joy? Yes, I moments do. Moments of joy, yes. moments of joy. Now Microsoft's saying exactly the same thing as if it's a fucking echo chamber and they're all living. Get it? Uh, but yeah, Microsoft just like, we need to... Uh, we need to make sure that all women uh, are just as capable as the men. We need to make sure that all women are covered up in attire that is suitable to their tasks. So a penny in the kitchen. I, th I always thought it was kind of badass that Red Sonia could slay 100 people in a fucking metal bikini. I think that's way more impressive than a big suit of armor. Uh, that's Red Sonia. That's Red Sonia. Can't wait for that movie. Where she fights the, oh, the patriarchy. The patriarchy. Because <laughs> it's all the fucking same. Everything is the fucking same. No matter where we go. There's only or what one franchise <laughs> Red Sonya movie. Brigitte Nielsen. Yeah, and it's horrific, and I love it. I fucking love it. <laughs> she can't act for shit, and I love it. Yep. With, with I love it. Red Sonya and Totes Not Conan. She, I know, right? Uh, she's a little better than Conor McGregor. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Dude. He, okay. In the roadhouse, he's smiling the whole time. He's naked a lot. Uh, and, be, and, and like his voice is really weird and high. So they just have him like all the time. He's smiling. He's like walking around going, hey, Letty, whatever the fuck he's doing. And, uh, yeah, it's it's fucking hilarious. Hey, lucky charms. I know. It, like, it's fucking funny. It's fucking hilarious. Not a good movie. 
Not uh it was fine. Uh the fights were okay, but ridiculous. Jake Gillenhall, he uh he went on that Hollywood diet, didn't he? Yes, he did. Well, um yes. You mean uh what's it called? What's the drug? Oz Oz Ozempic? Ozempic, yeah. yeah. I don't think he was on that. I think he was just on straight up steroids. So Okay. Yeah. No, Ozempic is fucking ruining everybody. And uh, like, just wait. Uh, by the way, it's like a diabetes drug, right? That uh, yes. th- that makes you skinny, oh, but it also makes you look gaunt and dead. And I'm sure there oh. won't be any side effects in like five years <laughs> at okay. all. I'm just asking for a friend. Can you hit me out? I'm- Dude, before you do, go look at mm. Sharon and Kelly Osborne, who have both admittedly oh. taken it. <laughs> They look like their dad now. Uh, Kelly Osborne looks like her fucking dad now, completely. Sharon! Hey! Sharon! Sharon! How is he still alive? It's incredible. It's insane. And he's like, he seems to be getting healthier by the year. Ozzy? Ozzy, yeah. No, no. If if you listen to his interview, because I, I have, uh, like, I'm a boomer, so I have serious radio, and I listen to uh, Ozzy's Boneyard a lot because I like metal. And uh, they do Ozzy no. Speaks, and you can't understand a fucking word he's saying. So, motherfucking hell, I can't see Not even fucking exaggerating. That's what he sounds like. Sharon has him so doped up. And he's turned into a giant fucking pussy. He was I like, f- he was four. I, I think there's, he still, she still runs. He fucked a hairdresser. He's a rock star. Like, whatever. They do that. But uh, I think there's still, she still manages. He can't tour anymore. Like, uh, he had some kind of spinal injury or something. So he can't tour anymore. But yeah, he's just fucking out of it. Just comp- the fact that he's still alive is kind of a miracle. It's, it's a testament amazing. to modern scientists. Yeah. It's modern science. <laughs> they need to experiment on his body afterwards. To find out how the fuck. <laughs> fuck. He would still be alive. Uh he, he puts you to shame, Dekla. Right? Well, I didn't do drugs as long as he does. True. I, I, I would have died, but I also didn't have rock you're star three, money. You know, three year you had a three year gap. I, I yeah I don't I, I had a nice stay, uh, uh, as as a ward of the state. Uh, hey. Yes, yes, taxpayer dollars. It's very nice. I was a, I was a number for three years. So oh, I am not a number. I am a person. My number was H two o seven three eight. Oh, Ooh. water, huh? Yeah, water. Yes, water. I was a meat popsicle. Did you see the tweet today with Joe 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 Rogan? Where oh, no. um, it's, it's a meme of Joe Rogan saying, uh, "I uh, I I uh, drink water to keep hydrated." And, and yeah, <laughs> here I'll share, 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 it. share it. Share it. Share it. <laughs> X-ray girl. Okay, yeah. uh, Joe Rogan. I drank water and stayed hydrated last week. CNN. Joe Rogan drinks dihydrogen <laughs> monoxide, <laughs> a solvent used to cool nuclear reactors. <laughs> that that is our fucking media in a nutshell. Yes. Yeah, it's so fucking. It's so good. It's such a good meme. It's such a good meme. I got caught up in a political thing last night. Because uh, I was on unsubscribe podcast uh, with oh yes uh, Brand- I saw you I Brandon saw- <laughs> Brandon Herrera right so he's he's running for the congress twenty third congressional district here in Texas by the way vote for him he's the AK guy on Twitter and a YouTuber and his a Rhino opponent, opponent like tweeted us and he just put up a little clip saying California is my favorite state and, yes and cut out the part where Brandon says if nobody who lives in California was there yes. <laughs> It got community noted. It did. It yeah. did. I'm like, it got community. It got community noted, and then a guy underneath it posted a picture of his vacuum cleaner 
and said, can my vacuum cleaner ratio a politician? Yeah. So we all liked and retweeted <laughs> that. And then that was ratioing the politician in no time. I was fu- yeah, and he got ratioed to hell. So that was uh that was a funny that was weird. That was a funny little moment this afternoon that I had. So apparently I got shouted out on Joe Rogan. This channel. Apparently so. Uh, yes, by um Kerp. Matt's good. Kerp. Yeah. Kerp. Yeah. We love Kerp. Kerp. Mm-hmm. I wish we could show it, but he Kerp, probably would. Kerp hit us. sends me. I, I'll, <laughs> oh. I'll have to. I'd have to ask permission. Kerp sends me the best text messages ever. They're random. <laughs> like I get them like once every two months, but like he'll watch a video, one of your videos or Jerry's, <laughs> and he'll just go off on it <laughs> in his Kurt kind of way. It's so fucking good. God, we got to get him back on FNT. I love that guy. Love that guy. Yeah, he's on, he's go, he's gonna be on Joe Rogan. I think he was on Kill Tony, uh, so he's gonna be out there. He's in Austin this week. But thanks, Kerp. I appreciate it. That's fucking awesome. That's awesome. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, oh, oh, you guys didn't. Uh, X Men apparently did four million. Got four four million people watched it in five days. Hmm. That's pretty good. That that well, would have to be like the biggest Marvel any, thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Better than any live action Marvel. Yeah. Oh, that, long shot. I, I, I think I'm, Loki was the biggest with two and a half, wasn't it? Yeah. With Loki season one. So is this, uh, who is this according to Disney though? So is it? Well, it, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this is not uh, like, what are they called? Fucking Sambu or Subu or whatever the fuck. I'm kind of. Samba. Samba. They, they have now signed a deal with Meta. So I would take everything that's coming out of Samba TV ratings out with a pinch of salt. Samba TV's technology was that they they found a way to read the pixels on your fucking TV, like to, to measure what you're watching, right? Yeah. Um, because none of these companies will give any of the fucking information because it's incredibly low. Yes. Um and we got that basically confirmed during the strike when the WGA, I, I asked one of the negotiators, and he's like, it's not that important. I'm like, really? Mm. That's not important to you guys? I'm like, we want transparency. Mm. But I'm like, why is that not important? He's all, oh, no, because we want better front-end deals. Oh, because you know the numbers are bad, too. And apparently yeah. those numbers were shared with some of the uh, WGA negotiators that are just not allowed to share them. So Netflix has been the one out there that basically has been showing stuff. They showed some Star Trek stuff. That was pretty interesting. Uh, Next Generation is the most watched. Ooh, of course. I mean, I, I mentally, I, I kind of go back every year or two and rewatch the whole. Yeah, DS9 was low, and I'm like, DS9 with me, for me, is oof, it's right up there. The Next Generation with me. But uh, I'll have to rewatch them again. Uh, oh, I meant the last night. It came up when I was talking to Drinker. Um, who are your favorite captains? I assumed who they were, but I didn't know for sure. Kirk. Well, you you, you know mine. Well, I so I said I'm pretty sure Gary's is Kirk and the as is is probably Picard. Correct. A- as is wrong. Because Kirk's a better captain. I this isn't a, a, an argument that I am happy not to even engage in. <laughs> we can ask the audience. Because it's a personal thing, but I'm never going to say that Kirk is not the best captain. The the question is, who's your favorite captain? Who okay, is okay. your favorite? Okay, okay. Uh, who's the yeah. best captain? I think Cisco is pretty fucking good, too. Uh, Cisco's pretty damn good. There again, all the captains have been good. Yep. They've all been very uh, good. Michael captains. Burnham. Mike, uh, listen. Apart from... Well, Anything that came after Enterprise. <laughs> Michael Burnham. Here's the best action figure ever wow. made. Uh-oh. Ever made. Oh, that was just my fan <laughs> falling down. I, I've... Uh, yeah, I, I moved it. Uh, five hours I spent clearing out a fucking closet yesterday. A single closet here. Did you? Who did you find in there? Uh, who did I find? Tom Cruise. No. <laughs> uh, just get in who's the guy? Who's, who's the guy who played... Uh, Iron Fist, is it Finn? Oh. Jones? Uh, the, the British guy from uh, the gay British from guy Game of Thrones. From Game of Thrones. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I found his Iron Fist figure because I, it was supposed to come with like the Iron Fist costume from season two, and it didn't. <laughs> I so I found just, him in the closet. So I found him mm. in the closet where he fucking lives. Uh, <laughs> I found a couple. I found uh, a couple of figures I got for you to say, but no, this is the most accurate figure of all time. This is a uh, piece of wood that's painted Michael Burnham. I'm Michael Burnham. Does the, uh, uh-huh. the answer change for either of you if it was the peak of that character? I'm versus, Spock's sister. You know, only uh, oh i mean i mean to me it'd be still be picard where you got the absolute best captain like at their best not like considering all the worst shit mm, okay say picard. repeat that question sorry i was picking up my fan so because the thing about it is i assume that picard is at a disadvantage because of all the fucking shit that came later compared to kirk not that kirk has never been a part of anything bad it's just that yeah yeah you know, it's, it's called generations take... it was with picard yeah, it was fucking oof. terrible yeah, that is Gee, even I'm aware of that. I don't even like, I haven't well, seen it. But to me, to me, when you say Picard, all I think of is Next Generation series because I'm not a great yeah. fan of the films, and I'm certainly not a great fan of Picard. And even though Picard season three was the best that we've got since, it doesn't hold a candle to what the Next Generation show was. Not a candle, but it was a better it was a better point of of leaving off than Nemesis was for sure. Yeah, because that was the te- that was a dog shit film. Was Nemesis absolute terrible, but awful film? Kirk had so many great moments. Uh, I'd be but... curious if it was like Wrath of Khan Kirk versus I don't know Undiscovered don't Country. Know, but... Undiscovered Country Kirk. Undiscovered Country is I I that is possibly my favorite Star Trek movie. I'm That's seeing cool. that in half a month's time. Oh, <laughs> it is. I I just. F- it is I hope so oh, after the fucking oh, fifth one. Well, <laughs> because you got to look at it in context. Like which one? Which one? Kirk, which one? Kirk was dealing with some personal issues in in Wrath of Khan, right? And then, mm. like, I'm getting old, but the issues were much bigger in in Undiscovered Country. Undiscovered Country. Yeah, yeah. it was time. It was it was time. His son, it. the Klingons, all that shit. Let them die. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Hmm. So when are you uh, going to see it, Mahler? Uh, me and Drink Rain for like the 15th-ish of every month, so we'll be around Christopher then. Plummer, dude. Christopher Plummer. Oh, so fucking good in it. I want to watch it oh. right after this now. Damn it. Yeah, no, I'm all, I'm all, <laughs> I'm all wet. Well, yeah, I'm all who's... fucking ready for it, you know? Uh, <laughs> curious, me and Drink have done a video per, uh, like, I guess, what would you call them? Like the OG Star Wars, the Star Trek movies? Yes. I, I yeah. 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 It's been fun. Kirk is pretty cool. I'm quite a fan. Yes, he gets he gets some really really great moments in the uh, the movies. And you go back and watch that original series where people go, oh, it's so dated and old, and you see how fucking superior writing was back then because oh. writers wrote books, <laughs> had other jobs, did things, and didn't just sit in their room and their entire fucking reference to the world is fucking watching Buffy. You know, when that, yeah, when that little bit of space seed that they put up. Uh, that Robert, uh, yeah, dude. You know, oh yeah, yeah. my god! I just, I just had to go and watch Space Seed after that. It, yeah, Space Seed. I you really have did. Have to it, watch it was... Space Seed if, if, if before you watch Star Trek Two. Yes, absolutely have to. It's I was must. not given that. I even asked about it beforehand. Oh, drink, drinker, drinker failed. We should all judge him. <laughs> wow, wow. It's, it's super interesting because I think it's just been such a long-running thing that everyone has a different perception. Because uh, I asked him if I had now seen almost all of what he considers to be like Captain Kirk's best stuff. And he said yes. And then there were several people in the comment section that were like, no, you haven't seen loads of shit from the TOS stuff. And I was like, oh. Mm. Well, I, like, I, had no, I don't know exactly what people generally think of the original series if there's... But like that clip of Robert shit, even I thought, I was like, shit, man, that was really good. <laughs> When you watch the original series, you will see that if you, if you were, correct me if I'm wrong, but would you have said that your perception of Kirk before you watch Star Trek, based off how he seems to be perceived in modern media, is is like a Lothario, happy go lucky type of uh, um, womanizer? Woman, was, yeah, exactly what Jar Jar say- did to him. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of it was I, I thought it was going to be William Shatner playing a more uh, reason like like a better reasoned uh, JJ Kirk, but it's no, been neat he, to watch. he's 
yeah, he's like in the original series. He's he's a really good captain. He's a fucking captain. He's a really really good captain, and uh, yeah, it's such a it's such a mishandling of his character to portray him that way. Um, yeah, he's he's excellent. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, <sighs> all right, X Men, a show you haven't watched. I watched the first two episodes again. I thought they were fine. I thought they were fine. Um, uh, I did like this cartoon. What was that? Oh my god. Uh. Is it racism? I had to use a backup cable. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so I uh, thought it was really good. Uh, I was more of a fan of Spider Man the Animated Series, but I cannot question like X Men the Animated Series, one of the biggest cartoons of all time, right up there with Batman the Animated Series. Period. Uh, made a lot of X Men fans, thought it was really good. Just followed the comic books. It's fun stuff. Uh, so I don't think they. There's moments of cringe, uh, but they're like just like added in, like the Daily Bugle putting the X Men Gala there and knowing all the history of, about that. Uh, and then there's what the creators of the show one was fired a week beforehand, and another director out there popping off and pissing off fans. I don't know why the fuck they would do that. Trying to say the trial of Magneto is somehow a commentary on fucking January 6th. That's a fucking reach and a commentary on MAGA, except it came long before MAGA. So uh, if that if if you're using existing stories that were written by your betters, you know that's typical Hollywood. Fuck you. But uh, no denying that most people liked it. No denying that most people like it. I think Flash liked it. Uh, your boy Zach liked it. Uh, some other comic book people we talked to liked it. Um, and uh, yeah, I just didn't think it was as offensively bad at, or even close than all the other Drek we've gotten from D+, plus, including What If, which is fucking shit, by the way. Oh, that, I, I, oh. <clears throat> I've seen so little of What If. Yeah, don't bother. Uh, X-Men 97 hit 4 million views in the past five days on Disney+, Plus, according to Disney. <laughs> <gasps> wow. No uh, this marks the streamer's most watched season one premiere for a full-length animated series since What If. Okay, Wait, what? What if didn't do four fucking million? No, no, since what if? I don't think what if did a million, to be honest with no, you. No, it did like 300 and something thousand. Uh, the proud it did family. Terrible. I am group. So they're just comparing it to. Uh, so this must be four million views around the world. Yeah. On uh, uh, which, I mean, if you think about that, not super impressive. And what's a view at Disney? Is it an impression? Uh, is it watching it for more than a minute? Uh, remember, Who knows? famously, the BBC iPlayer basically has the same rules as YouTube for an hour show. Uh, X-Men 97 follows up uh, X-Men the Animated Series, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I wonder how they're going to... Well, yeah, well. uh, for I, I love that people are pointing out that uh, X-Men has always been woke, and then they're showing up the, the, the clips of Nightcrawler, talking about, you know... He's Catholic. Uh, I think it's good. And and uh, Wolverine accepting Jesus Christ. Uh, what's what's the, woke about a guy talking about? No, they, they they they. Well, they the argument is X Men's always been woke because they're against things like genocide and racism. Like there's another what? side that's for that. Oh, I thought you were going to say they're admitting that they're <laughs> that the wokeness is a religion. Well, it is a religion. Yeah, of course it is a religion, religion that is for genocide <laughs> and actually yeah, pretty yeah, racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Uh, the series has been positively received, scoring a 97. It was what was that? A hundred? Was that a hundred percent of Rotten Tomatoes with Variety Critic? Uh, whatever. Fucking get the shit out of here. But uh, it's doing pretty well. We'll see. For a cartoon, that's uh... still no word on why he was fired. Still no word on why Bo DeMeo was fired. Mm -hmm. None at all. <laughs> that's your phone. It's not me. No, no, that's that's talking to Gary. No, my phone's nowhere near my soundboard, though. Oh, okay. okay. Like, nowhere near it. Like, here, I'll get it near it. Mola, are, they, are the people in your basement trying to hack into the Wi-Fi? No, no the dog got them. Before, oh, okay. before I went on Piers, my sound cord like, went out and I thought it was just the connection on my other computer, but it might be uh, the cord. It might be the cord. 
Yeah, I yeah was, screaming, but, screaming stopped a while back. So that's good. That's good. Maybe the dogs are finished eating now. Yeah, yeah boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Hey, let's get to soups. Oh, oh. Getting to Superman? Yeah, as a topic. Let's go. Uh, I have a life size Superman right here. You can't see it. Yeah, you do. I do. Hang, hang on. Maybe I can turn my camera around just enough for you can see like the cape without spilling a drink. Hang on. There's his cape. There's his. Yeah. You see it? Okay. There's my yeah. Look at that. There we go. That was worth it. Wasn't it though? Oh, my camera's all fucked up. All right. Oh, the camera's on. Oh, God. The camera's on the whole time, huh? Hello. See, see a little DSP back there jacking off. <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, good old DSP. Hey, that reminds me, uh, Gundam's going to be on FNT this week. He is. Oh. Gundam's mm -hmm. back. It's about time. It's about time. And this time he's still alive. I hope so. I certainly hope so. What a weird day it's been. All right. It has, it has been, actually. It has felt really weird. Something, something weird in the air today. Well, yeah. I mean, the giant ship crashed into a fucking bridge. <laughs> yeah, it did. God. If I hear Gary say ship, I just assume it's an alien ship. I'm like, did yeah. it? <laughs> like, no regular ship. You're like, Speaking oh. of alien ships crashing into, well, buildings, uh, Doctor Who released a trailer. Mm -hmm. Doctor Who released, yeah. by the way, we didn't even discuss Doctor Who is now being released first in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, assholes. You make it shitty and you finally give it to us first. Yep. You can uh, have it. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want it. You can have it. I, I've never wanted American influence in the show, ever. I, it's a tr fucking travesty. It's a travesty. And the fact that it's being released in America, I mean, nobody gives a shit now. But um, I noticed the trailer. Uh, I think it's still. So there's one on BBC, which is doing pretty well as far as, ra uh, as, far as like likes to dislikes, right? Mm -hmm. And there's one on uh, Disney Plus did one. Hang on. Let me go check. That was close to being ratioed. Yeah, no, uh, it's very close. This one. But look, look what else is suspect about this. Okay, Ooh. very close to being ratioed. It's got four point six million views and only twenty nine hundred comments. Whoa! It's got four point okay. six million views and only sixteen thousand likes. Yeah. Hmm. No, that should have embedded. about a. By the way, in uh, uh, it, oh, it's obviously embedded. A normal video at a 4.6 million subs would have minimum 80 to 100,000 likes, mm. 7 to 15,000 comments. So it's embedded, just to let you know. But yeah, it's almost ratioed on Disney Plus, where it's got a lot more views. Uh, on the, uh, the Doctor Who website, it's only at 591,000 views. And it's oh. and the ratio is much different. It's like no, nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's thirty thousand up to five thousand down. Uh, nobody no, cares. No, it comes out in uh, April or May. I don't care. It looks fucking terrible. It looks utterly looks terrible. Looks awful, 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 awful. Uh, and we don't have to watch this, do we? You can't no. force this. No, nope. you made a deal. We're done after the specials. Yeah. Did I make a deal? Did I say yes. that? Yes. Did I say that? Yes. Did yes. It sounds like the Brits are conspiring. Chat, did I say that? I mean, I, I might Yeah, have. he said oh, that. You said, you said it. You said it. You said, uh, just watch the specials. Just watch Which was already <laughs> asking too much, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, then I'll just go back on it. I mean, you know, that's what it is. <laughs> Barry, Barry doesn't even remember it anyway, if he said it or not. I know, yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, King God. Papu Nut for twenty dollars says morning and dropping a twenty as usual. Thank you, thank you. Uh, can't really help today's Hollywood. Better to capitalize on their idiocy and God, please don't make me misidentify another person because playing it uh, as a maid at this year's Honolulu Kauai Con. Oh, what like a French maid? Kauai. Is it? Kauai? <laughs> Kauai. At least you're not on Maui. Which is totally Kauai. getting fucked over right now, by the way. 
Yeah, that whole Maui conspiracy looking pretty real these days. I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's a big fire there. Mm. And uh, now they can't get insurance payments. They've made things really fucking hard for the residents. And the whole conspiracy is uh, that it's a land grab. Which it's <sighs> certainly starting to look like. And, and like they can't get insurance. They can't get their houses fixed. And then somebody swoops in and says, I'll buy your yeah, house from you. I buy it for a low, get it for a really low price. Yeah. Arg, another name on the Streamlabs side for $20. Uh, first, Leslie Hedlin was in her a new grope phase working for Weinstein. Now she's in her The Empire Dykes Back. One hey. with the <laughs> uh -huh. Next comes uh. the rug burn of the DEI phase. Oh. Oof. Oof. Yeah. That got Sounds dark. painful. Yeah, the acolyte. We've talked a lot about the acolyte. Uh, it's getting fu it's over a half a million down votes. Oh, destroyed it's on the ratio now. Absolutely destroyed. It's going to be. Yeah. Are you guys. Okay, I'll ask you. You covering the acolyte? Oh, yes. God, yeah. Of course. This, you is, are. this is my new. This is my new assault on cringe. King of cringe bat baby for the acolyte. Assault on cringe. Yeah. It's coming I'm out. Waging a, I'm waging a holy war on cringe. <laughs> I'm waging wow. a cringe war. It's a, a cringe jihad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember it. I fought alongside him during the cringe wars. <laughs> oh, God. Um, dude, it's not as fun as House of the Dragon going up against Rings of Power, but House of the Dragon going up against the Acolyte is a good... Good caveat. Right oh, <laughs> good luck. Oh, it's fuck. Especially when some of the shills, if you watched uh, Grizzy's video, uh, were going, this is like Game of Thrones. Where in the I fuck do you, okay. for one, where in the <laughs> fuck do you the, get uh, that? That's the mandate, isn't it? That's the mandate. You you need to you need to say that it's like Game of Thrones in Star Wars. That's You know that's what they're trying to push with them. Okay. I said do that for you. Remember they got the um the Lord of the Rings uh super fans to discuss Rings of Power. Yes. And none of them uh, none of them gave a shit about Lord of the Rings. No. And then they went and watched House of the Dragon and thought it was a yes. better show. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta give credit to that that one TikTok girl or whatever she is. She was straight up real about it. She's all I haven't seen it. No. Uh, Saw House of <laughs> Dragon. That was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You took the bag. Fair play, love. You took the bag. Yep. Yep. And then she went straight back to making Harry Potter TikTok. Harry Potter. That's right. She did Harry Potter TikToks. That was it. That's her thing. Good. Uh, for her. I got a, by the way, I don't think I ever told. I don't think I told you this. Oh boy! Uh, I was uh, <laughs> something. Something you want to I put was, in the private chat first? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I I took the test and it actually came back positive. Oh, you did? Um, I was approached. I've been to the to clinic see, <laughs> to see whether or not I wanted a press pass for the uh, games developer conference. What? I sh you should go, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> Next year, if they, if I get asked again next oh year, oh my god, you have to go and just go. Oh, Hello, god, comrade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get to sing the Soviet the national hundreds, anthem hundreds when you get there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Enoch Maman. Oh shit! For real? Nine he, parts. He ranted. He ranted. Wait. Nine parts. Enoch Maman. He is an abuser of Streamlabs. He admits it. Says, I'm going to try to keep this short. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to fail. I just yeah. saw the Roadhouse remake. I think Birds of Prey is the worst movie ever made. This might be number two, uh, pun intended. I'm not a fan of the original, but it's Shakespeare comparatively. It's not woke or pushing any agenda, but it's also one of the most uh, intersectional pieces of crap I've ever seen. Yeah, dude. There was... Um, random mixed race daughter with black dad i mean everything was it was there it was there uh all the dudes are all good looking and jacked but the female lead is the only attractive woman 
Uh, yeah, she would play the rat catcher. She was the rat catcher from. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. From the Suicide Squad, and the other woman yep. is is a fat sack of shit. <laughs> uh she got booty. That's for sure. Remember the scene in the original Roadhouse? I honestly can't because I haven't seen the original Roadhouse in years. Uh, the one where Patrick Swayze backs the lead gal slowly up against the wall. It's like he's a lion stalking his prey. She's got seductive smile on her face. The scene is pure sex. Not this movie. No. No, not this movie. Watching Drinker's review, it looked so bland. Yeah, it was just... Yeah, I... I've seen so much shit. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not good. But I just I don't see why I would ever watch it. There's just no reason. There's no reason to watch it. I, I felt the exact same way watching Ghostbusters. The exact same way. Just like, all right. We're in the era of meh. Uh she does all that. Uh she does all that in this. One, she initiates all the kissing. Why? Because she's a strong whammon. And men being the aggressive one is toxic. No, she not also, I don't think men are allowed to initiate yeah, I don't in, think, in TV. and They're not allowed to initiate sexual. She also uh, rescues herself. Why current fucking year? This is true. That I oh, did yeah. notice that. That was fucking. Yeah, she fights off uh, the, the, the guy who wants to take over the club who like outweighs her by fucking 75 pounds, maybe. Uh, the fight scenes all suck because Doug Lyman is a spastic retard. Uh, three hundred and sixty degree. Mean, all right. Can I just say you're not my mom? That last super chat. Boost. Uh, three hundred and sixty degree. Uh, sixty degree camera spin. Shaky cam. Yeah, the shaky cam was annoying. CGI green screen. Screen, despite it all being on a real set. Yes, yes. There was CGI boats. It's fucking CGI boats. Like, why in the fuck would you do that? Uh, it's worse editing than Madam <laughs> Webb. Conor McGregor is terrible. He is. It was funny. It was so funny. I just want you to see the Conor McGregor scenes, uh, Mahler. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, Trico's that, the same thing that he's, he's like, shit. It. I was like, yeah, it doesn't really surprise me. I'm going to be completely honest with you. There are three scenes where he fubs a line. I couldn't even fucking tell. How could you tell a knock him on? I couldn't understand what he was saying. He was like talking like this. Uh, the other actors look at the camera expecting to hear cut. Uh, when you don't hear Doug yell cut, they continue on like nothing happened. I'm not making this up uh, times. Little Doug was too much of a pussy to ask Connor to do second take. Remember Ben Affleck in Justice League? How uh, one minute he was into it, then not? Oh, that was the alcohol, most likely. That was probably the alcohol and the gambling problem. Mm. Uh, the Snyder scenes, he was loving being in uh, Frank Miller's Batman and Joss's scenes, he was uh, in the Super Friends Batman and just wanted to kill himself. That's Gyllenhaal the whole movie. He uh, Gyllenhaal's performance is weird in this. Uh, he literally goes from having fun then wanting to kill himself in the same scene. It's like the soul being turned. It's like his soul being turned on and off with a light switch. Yay! I'm in the '80s action star. Uh, I'm gonna be an '80s action star. Oh wait. Current year thing again. Please kill me. He puts emotions into a ba uh, a badass line, then lets out a loud sigh before he says 2024 meta joke. Same scene. Hmm. Uh, I watched the entire end credits. Now uh, you know what I saw. There was more consultants, coordinators than stuntmen and VA artists. The whole movie is at war with itself. I could go on, but I'm going to shut up now. Fuck current year. Don't see this. It's a piece of shit. Yeah, it's Amazon. So on that, and th and then after all that consulting, they decided not to put it in theaters like they they promised Doug Lyman. And uh, can you blame them after watching it? Can you blame Amazon? Not a, I'm not an Amazon fan. Uh, animating Andy for 100 euros. <laughs> May have been a week, but still congrats on getting 1 million subs. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, you've proved that being old, you can still teach Dan the new meaning of pain, the meaning of humiliation, the meaning of defeat. Oh, and Dan is still gay. I completely agree. Age and treachery. 
never bet against age and treachery. It'll win against some wet behind the ears, snot nosed little punk from Brazil. He's a little talented guy. He's a talented guy. Who should have beat me, by the way? Yeah, yeah. God. Just it was one song, Dan. One fucking song. I had to make ended. Okay, would have ended it all. It was halfway. It was only a third through the year. We're we're coming up on a year since the bet was made. So at that time, I had uh, twenty videos out, maybe. I had to do thirty-five more. He could have just done fucking one, in his sleep. I'm just can. How many views? How many views? Dan Vass doing? I'm just Ken. How many views? Ten million. Oh. Uh, I mean, in what time? But I would say at, at least seven point five million. Okay. At least. If he waited too long to do it, it would be seven point five. <gasps> if he Gary. hit, the, if he hit it right, it'd be ten. My head sketch is here as well. Oh shit! You yeah, boy. That's fucking awesome. Frame that stuff. Yeah, boy. Oh, it is. Now I'm putting. I've got the other head sketch, so now I'm putting the two head sketches together and getting it framed together. Hell yeah. Uh, Derek, uh, spelled D D A R R Y K. Two parts uh, for 280 Zardozes. That's actually yeah, South, South African. South African peso. Yes, if you can. Hey Gary and Az, ever played any of the King Quest games? Why are you asking me? Maybe Mahler. I exclude Mahler because he's like 12 years old. Okay. I did not. I did not. Only in like human years. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Uh, congrats on one million. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you bow to no one. No, you guys bow to no one. I bow to you. I bow to you. I bow to you guys. Thank you. I to no one. Did you, did you play King's Quest? I did not. I did not. I did not. I did not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Josh Kelsey drops nineteen ninety nine. Walks away because that's what Josh does. Hail Josh Kelsey. John McKinley yeah, for forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Gary. I'm sure you're tired of hearing this, but congrats on one million. Oh no, I'm not. Don't stop. <laughs> stop it. Don't stop. Don't. don't Thank you. Don't. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you all for helping uh, keep me sane in this shit show timeline. Hail to you. Peace. Peace to you. You keep us sane. It's reciprocal. It's a very reciprocal thing. God. I don't know how. Kelly Jones it. cover, by the way. Kelly Jones. That's fucking dope. That's good. Enoch Maman is back. <laughs> oh, no. For 20. So sorry, guys. I set a part 10 in Streamlabs. The Roadhouse remake really pissed me uh really pissed at me pissed me off with all the current year crap. I understand if you don't have time to read it on stream, I just needed to vent. It's all good, baby. We got you. Got right out. Got right out. Got right out. Uh BC Chain 315, two parts for $30 says hail Gary as Mooley and Sex Paid Girl. Uh yesterday was the 30th anniversary of my favorite game series, The Elder Scrolls, back in 2000. 18, I'd given anything for a TV movie on The Elder Scrolls 6. Not anymore. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't want anything. Did you hear that uh, yesterday? Um, apparently, there is a playable, playable version of Elder Scrolls 6 at the minute. Nice. Where? Well, in house. Oh. I keep hearing like Diablo's back up on Battle.net. I need to go check that out. Because I would actually play the shit out of that, like the original, the OG. They re they did the the remastering of Diablo two, didn't they? They did. So I heard the originals back, and they they managed to kill all of their customer base for Diablo four. Whoops! There's Blizzard of Blizzarding. You didn't want to fight the girl boss demon. Wasn't that? It was just. It wasn't that at all. It was they. Uh, it's not a good game. They try to throttle the gameplay and slow people down and uh, dictate how they how they wanted them to experience the content. And people just like, fuck off, fuck that. As well as the insanity of the microtransactions and everything, because that's where we are today. 
Yeah. Well, it made it made it well, just uh, I know. A joke. Um, uh, if Gamer Gary isn't familiar, it is a lot uh, has a lot of the themes inspired by and ripped off from Lord of the Rings. I have no hope in Bethesda anymore. And Gary, is there a place where I can send you a package? Hail the fellowship as always. There is a PO. I saw you when I said package. I saw that look in your face, X Ray Girl. I did. Uh, there's PO box. Go uh, if you hit view channel. The PO box is there. I appreciate. It. I get lots of fun letters that i read they're always on my desk oh i don't want to make sure i'm not doxing anybody but uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh but thank you i read them they're wonderful uh an internet loser for 49.99 is gary have you told as that peeping tom has been invited invited to be part of the offenders <laughs> love the offenders. your appearance on unsubscribed <laughs> i hope you go back there sometime um Unsubscribed was lots of fun, and I would go back if they have me back. It was tons of fun. And the Offenders is fucking brilliant. That is fucking great. Uh, I have um, a lot of the uh, Peeping Tom plots have been mailed to me, and they are in my box of letters, and uh, I just pulled them out because they were kind of a mess in my closet. So I made a box of all my video notes, all the letters people sent, and all the Peeping Tom plot plots so i've got it all set aside if we ever want to actually do something because they're they're legit funny if we did them we'd have to do them like like comic strips though like not a full comic it'd be a comic strip like the little little yeah. books right no like back when, oh there's this thing oh, called in, like, wait, the wait, 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 in the <laughs> olden days there was a newspaper the news and yeah, there yeah, was yeah, comics yeah. yes that's <laughs> I don't know. where i got my I, 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 Floppy. We could do them as like flop. We could do them. As floppy. Yeah, you do it in strip form in a floppy. So you do multiple stories. It'd be like an <laughs> anthology. I, I don't think you need to do twenty four pages on Peepy Tom. You know, I think th three or four would be yeah. suffice. Okay, <laughs> each story. But uh, yeah, then you have boy. the artist style as if you're going through time. So you have it like a Bob Kaney, Golden and then you, Age. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. yeah. Golden and like a McFarlane age. Peeping Tom would yes. be hilarious. Just like ripped to fuck and just and then, like you then, know, Kelly then, Jones, Kelly Jones, Kelly Jones, dumb. and then it's we like, go to modern era with like horrible perspective and yeah, uh, and fucking, Tumblr art, uh, Tumblr art, and fucking Cal Art <laughs> shit. Yeah, that'd be fucking. And hilarious. he's uh, he's just like uh, I don't gay. gay. <laughs> he's like I'm cursed with wanting to look at women's tits and I don't care about them. <laughs> yeah, I don't care because <laughs> I have something to announce and I'm gay. <laughs> and they sat down in a fucking restaurant, eating just like just eating. No, that would be the best last issue is Peeping Tom, Marvel Comics Peeping Tom, and he's just <laughs> gay. <laughs> just turns gay and does gay stuff for four panels, and that's it. He's over. Oh. Full MCU. <laughs> oh yeah, fire sex paid girl. He goes to Pride. Hey, what? He he goes to Pride. He has lunch. Uh, he goes to uh a. A gay bathhouse and has dinner because they have oh to sit God. down and eat all the time, and that's the end of it. <laughs> Can he go to a drag queen show as well? <laughs> yes, yes. He gets a he gets a job at Nickelodeon and is uh, brutally. <laughs> br Actually, can great. he be a drag queen? Forget about going to a show. <laughs> and he does a show called I Farley or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> and then. Uh, Unalives I, I Marley. Un himself. <laughs> I Marley. It's Jacob Marley. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to warn you and spy on naked women. Uh, that one voodoo guy for twenty dollars. If the source material wasn't diverse, then how does it appeal to so many different demographics? Gary, did you get your prints? Yes. As I want to send you some too. Got to figure out how to ship internationally. Well. Uh, Gary, I <laughs> uh, don't ask. Don't ask me. Uh, All right, Gary's wife. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, for one, UPS is shit, and and they they ship internationally like fucking shit. Uh, DHL slightly better. FedEx way more expensive, but th that stuff will get to as you got to use FedEx. Mm. It's but like, I would let your stuff build up for a little while because it's fucking expensive i think the last shipment no the shipment before last 
It was like 400 bucks, dude. It was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's just cheaper to keep it and then just pay for an extra suitcase to bring it to us. It, it kind of is. And then you get to go out there. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Uh, quiet mode for nineteen ninety nine. As be careful promoting an open secret. Its creator is currently funding a PDF show on Kick. Uh, who an open secret Twitter openly acknowledges and attacked five years ago. What's a PDF? A uh, PDF file. Okay. PD oh. PDF, PDF file. Okay. I feel bad. For oh the creator of that fucking my file god. Because he spelled it like the file format, and I'm like. I, that's He's what I making thought. A, a, a printable page. It's that's, fine. That's it. It, won't, that's it won't be long. It won't be long before people forget it's a file format. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know it. anything about the filmmaker or anything. I just know I watched it when it came out. Yeah, yeah. And, that, that's yeah. yeah. I don't know anything about the filmmaker. I just saw the the open secret documentary and it was yeah horrendous. Well, the content was obviously yeah. Crazy. And it, it, there's I, there's so much more out there, and we're never gonna fucking hear it because they're very good at uh, well destroying these kids. And by the time they get old enough to even process it, they're like well into addiction. Now, a lot of them might have been predisposed to addiction already, but the massive and systematic I'll use their term abuse that they go through really feeds into their addiction, causes them to go that. Uh, I can tell you right now, going to meetings, um, the source of a lot of addiction, aside from it is a disease, the thing that really kicks it off is abuse. That's the commonality with pretty much everyone. Not everyone, but vast majority. Vast majority. Abuse of some kind, parents, teachers, friends, work, uh, whatever. Whatever. Born in the same year as the esteemed Mr. Nerdrotic himself. Ooh, you're fucking old. Uh, and a lefty. But holy crap how I agree with y'all. Keep it up. Y'all are fighting this bullshit. Old and tired for 500 Norwegian Krona. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Studio 22 podcast for $20. Not sure if you mentioned it yet, but Kurt Metzger gave you a great shout out on Rogan for the... Uh, Drinker Morgan segment. Much love to the fellowship. It's, it'll be on later unless you watched it live. Is it it's live? On YouTube. It's on YouTube first. I checked Spotify, but it takes a while for it to update, well, I, I think. But yeah, I don't know like if it, because somebody said they saw it in their telly in the UK. I don't know if it's honest uh, uh, on telly. Oh, wait, in you're the, talking about the Morgan segment. Okay, then I yeah, know. Yeah, Piers Morgan. I, I, I don't know like what channel it's on or whatever i know it's it's on sky news but that's in australia so i i don't know but i just wait for the clips on youtube so and shout out to paul shout out to paul i, I have a, a funny thing to share please do <gasps> so uh on the recent ish efab we covered a four minute review of the acolyte trailer from someone who oh yeah you know, like essentially loves it right and so we were curious um the video itself was empty as fuck. It, the editing on it was funny, but a lot of it was like, there's a red lightsaber, that could mean all kinds of things. This is set 100 years before the prequels, so that could fill in all kinds of gaps for the prequels. I think that's two of the three points he made. So, mostly covered it. Um, we spent most of the coverage talking about our own speculation, about not only like the fans of Star Wars, what Acolyte could be, the meta of Star Wars, you yeah. know, all the stuff to do with franchise, how it yeah. goes. Um this guy found out that we'd covered it and uh, took to Twitter, obviously to block me immediately, and then complain, like, how could they do this, and why is this in my oh, recommended? Fu uh, fuck this guy. This guy, like, goes out and talks <laughs> shit all the time on fucking Twitter. And no, does I know, I know, I know. Yeah. But I thought you'd find my, uh, I thought you'd find my tweet funny, because I... It's, 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 Pull uh, it up. It's true. I failed, all right? And I need to do a public apology. Okay. So, momentous occasion. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw this. I saw this. I saw this. I want to publicly apologize. EFAP covered a four-minute video and created a meager, a criminally short one hour and eight minutes. <laughs> oh, you got to pump those numbers. Oh, what up. is wrong with you? Are you okay? Are you guys I okay? I think that yeah. might be a, a That was a smaller short. Yeah. yeah. Whenever I fail to be long, I go back to the quote of my favorite hero. You've got to be long, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, you've got to be longer, Senator. I, I oh. love the, the the not much brings Mahler to Twitter unless it's some no. fucking horrible announcement like uh, Pedro uh, Pascal <laughs> has just finished his filming on Last of Us season two. <laughs> finished his mini golf session. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, mini, when some, mini golf. or when some <laughs> fucking fucktard brings up media literacy. Yep. Fucking media literacy. Like, all the chuds have never understood what they watch because it's always been woke. Media literacy. This is funny, though. Jake, our conversion I, should be one minute, one hour. I do agree, though. We fucked up. Yeah. I'm a little. I'm more concerned for you at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Are you okay? I um, need to go like, to the doctor. I, I'll I'll make sure I do once I get the basement sorted out because apparently a second oh, guy yeah. got out and it's just. Oh. There is clearly a leak. There's a leak. It's yeah. less to do with them getting out because it's fun getting them back in. It's the blood they leave around once the dogs have dealt with them. The mopping of that is so fucking annoying. You have, you have oh, no idea. No. And usually it dries up by the time the podcast is over. So I'm like, ah. You gotta get over. Well, you've got you the guys, you guys know you you've guys got know. the other prisoners down there mopping up the blood anyway, so I should take care of that. But uh, it does instill a lot of fear. I will say that it does. So it's kind of useful. I could do like you the Russians the do. Where they, uh, they're like working in a free environment, but they won't run away because they know what happens. You could do like the Russians and, and just feed them their own ear. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. I did that already. That was like basic. Okay. Uh, I do want to point out that like it, it wasn't on EFAP, but it was on this show. We got it over an hour out of Rebel Moon Part 2. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, wow. Yeah, you know what's so funny is we, like, almost breezed through Acolyte. I and know. I was, I was thinking, like, yeah, I'll throw it on to EFAP for context of someone else we were covering. We ended up covering the fucking trailer for, like, an hour. I don't know what happened. We went through it super duper slowly. It was really bad. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> frame by frame. <laughs> but our, our Rebel Moon breakdown of that trailer, that was, yeah, that was something else. We... We we fab that for sure. Not bad work, fellas. Oh, it's gonna be so bad, dude. I think it's oh, gonna be yes. really, 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 really bad. Um, Anakmon is back, abuser of Streamlabs for 50. Wait, Gary. You haven't checked your LinkedIn for years. That explains why you haven't responded to all the dick pics I sent you. Oh, hi. Actually, my wife's been going on an account, but all right. No. Uh, years and years worth of dick pics. I don't know why I did that. I just really uh, liked Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> Performance and Stakeout. I like Stakeout. Stakeout's a good movie. Dick Dreyfus. Dick Dreyfus. Uh, yeah, LinkedIn. I used it when I was... I got a job through LinkedIn, which I never thought was even possible. Wow. I got the Tesla job through through LinkedIn. Wow. It's yeah. the experience. Once you get that experience, they like hunt you down. Yeah, they did. At first I said no. And then I said, okay, I'll go to your training. And I felt it. I, I, the training was like super corporate. And I'm like, mm, no. And they're like, Throw us a number, and I'm like, all right. So I threw him a number, and they said yes. I'm like, shit. Now I've got, to, I got to work there. <laughs> uh, Dude, I just found out that you made a tweet saying this. All being said, considering they've essentially stolen 28k views and impressions from my channel and fundamentally misunderstood my video, I thought I'd share it here again. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Re <laughs> rewind, rewind, share that tweet. <laughs> Uh, you stole 28,000 views from him? <laughs> Apparently we stole the views and impressions from him. I almost want to show you his fucking I've video. I've got my it's bag so of funny. views right here. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that's, that's just overreaching, do. dude. <laughs> we well, stole I mean, him. I don't want to judge a dude by its looks, but look at that dude. <laughs> Come on. Hey, he's hanging out with that's Baby Yoda. Stolen. Oh, I thought it was a Chihuahua. Oh, it is Baby Yoda. It's a Baby Yoda. <laughs> Chihuahua, Yoda. Yeah. I like, the, I like the I, essentially stolen. It's like, how much work is the word essentially doing there? Like, I yeah. think if you had just played it's it. It's doing a and, lot of heavy lifting. <laughs> if you played it and did only five minutes of, like, a total of a video, sure, yeah, you stole it. But not if you did an hour well, of talking. 
was uh, about Jonathan McIntosh's video about how the MCU is too neoliberal. So it's got like where's his stolen impressions, huh? Mm. How's that work? Give the views back. <laughs> give, him back. Yeah, give, him, like, give him back. Give him back. Give him back. Give me back my views! <laughs> give me back my views! <laughs> How dare you! Ah. <laughs> oh, it's like shit. fucking Barbie with the ring. Give up for me! <laughs> <laughs> no, he's probably more like Gollum. My precious. My precious. It's mine. <laughs> Paul Belfort. I can't believe. It's the most attention. He's oh, he's still going, time. dude. Is he? Two minutes ago. He's still two minutes ago. Love how you screenshotted and post and didn't tag me to avoid further criticism and heat. He blocked me. Absolute coward behavior. You to blocked be honest. him. What? He blocked the me. Only what surprise it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reply saying you blocked him. You, you blocked, blocked him. You blocked. It's him. not even my screenshot. Put, put, no, put, you blocked channel. him. You little bitch. Yeah, I just put it on block me. How the fuck can you claim that wanna, you block me? I don't want to get between you two. I don't want to get between you two. I just want to stress the fact you blocked him. You little bitch. <laughs> Trying to avoid the negative engagement. I'm sure worried about you, man. Like, <laughs> number There's a number two. You. There's a number two. Do you think he licks? Only do you think surprising. He, hmm? Do you think he licks that baby Yoda? Uh, don't color. want to know. You know what I do to baby Yodas. You I their do. Heads off. Uh -huh. Very sad. No, it's very the, good. The only surprising thing about this being the best comeback you've got is that it's just one post and not a video that's seven hours long. We could do a seven hour long video, though. Uh, is that I'm a challenge? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Baller's like, you got other yeah, videos, yeah, homie. Yeah, like, yeah, sort of <laughs> <laughs> kind of goading you, you, man. You know? you realize, how is he going to argue? It's insane that they essentially added an hour and four minutes onto my four minute video and that they stole all my views. How does that make any sense? Did we put it on repeat for the entire time? <laughs> like, was it that fucking I, good? I would, I would, again, not a big fan of doing this, but I would go back and just look at him. I could definitely see how that might work out in his room temperature brain. I just like I just like the way that um, it got a, <laughs> it got put in his recommendation <laughs> based YouTube. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Uh, welcome to the internet, son. Welcome to the internet. Uh, Mola drank his milkshake. <laughs> nice baby Yoda you got there. J boy, J boy. <laughs> Paul Belfour for 50. Even with Az to give him a carry, he is so bad at games that it's scary. The fact won't who's this? be who's this? disputed. Who's this? Who's this? No, it's, who's it's this? me. Okay, it's Paul Belfour for $50. Got to do it again. So I'm going to reread it again. Even with Az to give him a carry, he is so bad at games that it's scary. The fact oh, won't be disputed because he's probably muted. Male <laughs> neurotic, the boomer named Gary. Yes! I'm muted. I'm muted. I'm not muted. You stole my views. <laughs> you stole my views. I want revenge. Dude, everyone's comments on that tweet is like, you blocked him. You blocked yeah, him. You blocked, you blocked him, him though. <laughs> <laughs> they block now. Uh, Buddy Rabbit for $20 says, it's criminal you don't uh, throw Cisco into that poll. Oh, did you do a poll? Oh, yeah. Who is your favorite captain? Kirk versus Picard. 64% uh, Kirk. I'll fire her and immediately rehire her if that makes you feel Thank better. Thank you. Um, even though Kirk still would have won. Uh, good show as always, gentlemen and ladies and non... Euclidean? Euclidean diversity hire. <laughs> as okay. help us get uh, Eric to release, hashtag release the hat. What's the hat? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, do, I'll work on him tomorrow. I'll work on him tomorrow. Like a, He's got this really... Uh, Apparently, the thing to say is he's got a really dope lid. Right? Oh, 
The one that he wore is that to uh, Megacon. That yeah. one is really freaking cool. Yeah. He had the prototype. Do you remember it, Gary? Is... No. Okay. <laughs> but no worries. <laughs> it's really cool. Prototype for what? I d- no. Aha. <laughs> A hat, like a just. It's a, a really a, good looking rip of this hat. Really I'm sure. Good. I'm sure it is. It's well, sorry, as the brothers say, it's a dope lid. Okay, it's get it right. Dope lid. Um. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't looking longingly at his hat. <laughs> I wasn't. Uh. I don't look. I don't. My my wife will ask me stuff like, "Uh, who's so and so dating? What were they wearing?" I, I don't fucking know. I, I no. I don't know. I don't care. I don't. I don't care who my friends are dating. I don't give a fuck. I don't even know if half of them are married. To be honest with you, because we never. It never comes up. I just don't care. She's all. You ever talk about me? Well, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Aww. Talk about Mrs. Neurotic all the time. Uh, no. I'm just. A, just a dude. We don't care about that shit. Captain Butt Chicken. Captain Butt Chicken for twenty dollars. <laughs> you guys and gals are awesome. Hailing uh, at you from Fort Worth. Hey, it's uh, only five hundred huh. miles north of me. Every one of you inspire me. So I got my first book releasing on April first, <gasps> called "Nothing uh-huh. Safe." First of many. Please shout out, and I will send more this weekend. Sh- well, Nothing my door safe. Open. Oh my God! You're knocking stuff, woman. You're knocking stuff over in here. I know. So I'm just kidding. That's how I always <laughs> talk to my wife. She just took out Batman. It's all right. Wasn't much of a challenge. Where was I? So uh, nothing safe. That uh, it must have been Robert Pattinson. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. You're not far off. You're not far off. <laughs> I got that one. I'm like, fuck, man. I wish that because I canceled the order and they sent it to me anyway. I'm like, yeah. at least I got the bad I, signal. Hey, the, 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 yeah, yeah. I, that's the, sending that to me soon. But uh, it's a good. Hey, I do like the costume. It's a good costume. It's all right. Fucking cape looks like shit. It's too too small. Um, <sighs> nothing safe comes out April first from Captain Butt Chicken. Is that going to be like written by Captain Butt Chicken? Bye. <laughs> in a world uh we're gonna leave it there get the square up uh probably soon vegas is coming a couple <clears throat> weeks i can't Thank wait you. two weeks two weeks to vegas which is in freaking insane i'm excited it's gonna be insane i might stay a couple extra days because for a thing Ooh. that i'll talk about but uh yeah it's gonna be lots of fun it's gonna be lots of fun so what do you got coming up baz <clears throat> Tomorrow, ripping the silver back on my channel. Uh, maybe during the day, I uh, might do a little bit more uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Did a big sesh yesterday, over nine hours in total. So, uh, we're having a little bit of rest today. What level are you? 31. Wow. I, I think you're more numbers. advanced in the main story, though, because I've just been going out on adventures. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Doing side quests and shit. No. Killed three... End of the stream yesterday. I carried on playing for about another hour. Killed two more griffins. Another rock. I haven't killed a griffin yet. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I did it on yesterday's stream. And I killed a dragon. I've actually killed a big old dragon. I tried to fight one, but I was doing, like, no damage whatsoever. (laughs) So I was like, I'm running, I'm running. That's a fun game. Fun game. Uh, and then um, Thursday, I'll be flicking my bean. And Friday, Ew. Friday night tight. Gorgeous. TMI. Yeah. Bob? What? That's every conversation uh, with that has T- to be real. <laughs> Too little information. How about that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what about too long to information? Hey, <laughs> too short. No such thing. Mahler, what do you got there coming up? Oh, uh, God. Uh, <laughs> we're between TV shows for ESAP right now. It'll be Halo, because Loki's all done. That's so starting up soon. Fringy's on his uh, his holiday. He's the one editing those, so it's, we're figuring out exactly what the release for that will be. 
Uh, we've recorded the next EFAP because he won't be here, so that'll go out on Moolah on Saturday. And the next Warrock episode will be The Three Musketeers from Paul W.S. Anderson. And that'll be next month. All those things on the way, as well as your usually scheduled flea Marie. Um, the last Stargrift episode is up on, on Moolah. Um, if you want to know why that stopped, that's all in there. We talk about it, but uh, that'll be the end of that fun adventure. Uh, but other than that, everything else is continuing as usual. Excellent. What about also, you? fighting people on Twitter. Oh, yeah. So but there's always that. <laughs> there's always that. There's always that. <laughs> Excellent. Ooh. Goo. Uh, at 6 p.m., I'm going to play some Genshin Impact uh, with Tugs. And then tomorrow, probably just the nooner and the afternoon. So nothing too crazy. Also, can I just shout out happy birthday to Kara Lynn? Mm. It's her birthday today. So if you can go wish her happy birthday. Happy birthday, lady. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Awesome. Uh, Real BBC will be back on Az's channel next week. Uh, Piers Morgan uh, appearance with uh, Critical Drinker, uh, the cool lady, and a tool uh, will be out later. And uh, <laughs> total fucking tool. What? Guy was a tool. Um, oh, yeah. It's all right. It's all good. Uh, yeah, and uh, shh, there'll be a nooner tomorrow. All kinds of fun stuff coming up. Thanks again uh, for getting this channel past 1 million subs. It's surreal. Uh, so this goes to you. To you. Filled out my plaque information yesterday. So we'll see if that shows up. But, uh, yeah. And, I, and I'm not going to lie. I want that fucker. So <laughs> I want it. Uh, and, yeah, uh, hail to the fellowship. Hail to the fellowship. Can't wait to see you all in Vegas. Until next time, everybody have a good day.